20 years ago, I couldn't imagine what you'd be doing on these bikes. We're really pushing the boundaries of what these bikes can do. Getting ready to push these bikes to the very limit. Look at the spin! Oh, he bat him out big time! The tech on these bikes has come so far. I can't believe how far this tour has come. We are riding the world's most advanced bikes. There's no way back when you get out of the gate, it's game on! If Superman was here, he would be so proud of his kid! Today, it's all gas, no brakes. To our coverage of the UCI Mountain Bike World Cup here from Ludenville, Peyragu in the Pyrenees. My name's Rick McLaughlin, joining me in the booth, Cedric Gracia. We're getting ready to go racing here. And what a place to do it. Brand new track, brand new venue for downhill. And there is that famous runway, made famous by, of course, Piers Brosnan. We're going for something a bit more high octane today than James Bond. It is the Downhill Mountain Bike World Cup. Cedric, top of this track, absolutely superb. Hello, good morning everyone, and welcome to Le Denvielle France, Perayude. Uh, yes, the top is so fast, you have to hit that line perfectly, get the berm, get the speed. Here is how today looks then, 10.45, we'll get underway with a semi-final for the elite women, then the semi-final for the elite men. After that, the big show, one o'clock, downhill finals for the elite women and downhill finals for the elite men at two o'clock. Do not go anywhere. This could well be one of the classics given the conditions we've had here over the weekend. It's cloudy today, 17 degrees Celsius, 82% 82 82 humidity. So, heating up. We did have a lot of weather yesterday that unfortunately led to the cancellation of the Junior World Cup race here. The, uh, the UCI, Warner Brothers, Discovery Sports and the local organisers got together with the riders, talked things out and it was decided that it just simply could not go, to go ahead in the interest of rider safety. You can see just how treacherous conditions were. The track, as I said, brand new here and uh, just Tri falling away underneath them, Cedric. Yeah, tricky, tricky, especially with a brand new rain, brand new track. It's always, you know, difficult to make it all work. Uh, safety's first, but it was really tricky for everyone up there, even for the marshal to stay just standing yeah. up. <laughs> even standing on the side of it was tricky, yeah. Exactly. So the qualifying results from that junior race now stand as the results. So Sasha Ernest and Ryan Pinkerton taking their second career wins, albeit maybe not the fashion they would have hoped, but a win's a win, and points are points. Crowds filling up the finish area today. So we did have more rain yesterday afternoon, but it's warming up a treat. And the course crew have been up there digging the ruts in, armoring things up. Things are looking better than ever. And let's take a look at it then. So this top section, one of the fastest parts of any World Cup track we've ever had. Exactly, a lot of pedaling today. And then you're in the off camber. It's really a track of two halves. As soon as you hit this tree line, things from, get extremely steep. From the Oakley Pride strip to the lake, it's, it's getting really steep and really hard to catch all those berms. And it's it's going to be a lot of new line today since the rain. We always appear lower speed than new line. It's going to be tricky for the riders. Well, don't take our word for it. CG <laughs> himself. Was Hello, guys. Done. Bike on the bike this week. I'm going to see what Ludenville track is going to offer. I heard it's fast, it's technical, and I'm ready to go. All right, start. Windy, couple jumps up, first elbow. Triple manual, the whole thing, like a kid. Big off camber. Step down, another step down. Step up, step down, sorry. Woo, windy. I guess we need to crank here for the double. Double! Already blowing out some corners here, especially this one. Big off camber. 
side corner to the left. Keep going, full speed. I'm crossing the road. Ah! There we go. Windy. Need to get some speed. Double. Oh, it's already blowing out. Woo, get confused there. Woo. Pretty flat here, but so hard to get a good timing for those corners. Whoa. Woo. That was offline there. The bridge. Woo. I'm already cooked. We have double, double here. Send it. Wood section. Step up, send down. Ah! All right. Now it's difficult. Pretty steep. Woo! Blowing out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, t'es sorti. Wrap. Oh, this is really hard here. Maybe I should get offline. Woo! <laughs> that was bumpy! I unclipped and I couldn't even find my pedal. Step down. Woo! A little bunny up. And as I build off camber, into a blowing out corner. Double. Woo. Soon the bridge. And it's even steeper from now on. Ah! But I'm cooked already. Steep part. Try to get the inside. Not so easy though. Another inside. Oops. A little bit offline here. Come on, <laughs> I think that was Steve Pete. Uh, inside corner here. <laughs> and another inside. Straight into the chute. Oh! Oh, it's steep and blowing out. I'll try to stay up there if I can. Big off camera. And now it's a steep shoot. Woo! And now it's a big off camber. Oh, I think soon we have the jumps. Oh! Let me breathe! Let me breathe! Oh. Ah. Another big shoot! Ah. Oh, it's too fast! It's too fast for old dog! <laughs> oh. Inside right here! Manuel! And the two double, 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 and let's send it! Ah! <laughs> oh, almost didn't make the corner here. And last judge. You're up at the finish line. All right, this is your course preview here in Ludavia. <laughs> well, I can tell you, you may have uh, sounded cool, calm, and collected through like that, but Cedric was the happiest man in France after he finished that run and the rain started. Yes, uh, definitely. It was already challenging enough, but uh, having, you know, Aaron Green on the side of the track, cheering you, and Steve Pete. <laughs> Come on, old man. <laughs> I, don't were, I don't know who they were shouting at behind you, yeah. <laughs> so here is the downhill standings at the minute. Valentina Hall leads the way ahead of the injured and missing Camille Balanche. So Nina Hoffman is in effect in second place. Marine Cabaru behind her, Rachel Afferton, Rasnick. Bauman, Yonce, Vidman, Farina, Newkirk, Ferguson, Harnden, Ahern, and Ronning. We're going to have a serious battle today. Yeah, we are. <laughs> this is feeling like it might might just be a classic today, given the conditions out there. Valley Hall, the rider with the wind on her back at the minute. Yeah, but need a win in Andorra. Nina then she won has to in prove Andorra. something today. The 2023 UCI World Champion. There is 
Nina Hoffman, the German rider, absolutely mesmerizing in Palar in Sal Andorra just one week ago. Looking good in practice this morning. Yeah, even yesterday, on the dry condition, she was going so fast. Yeah, a confident Nina. Could be a dangerous Nina. Marine Cabiru, a French win in France. Yeah. I've heard of Stranger Things. Yeah. Faster and faster. She's working hard and she wants it. She wants Big it time. indeed, yeah. Cabiru could be a real threat today, especially with the mixed conditions. Tani Seagrave, better and better every time we see her this season. Could this be the race? Working her way up, definitely. She goes one step better than she did in Andorra. Second place last time out for Seagrave. <laughs> the French public. Yeah, and it's warming up for them as well. The track will be drying out. As I said, the, tra the course team have been on course throughout the night, really armoring up, digging the ruts in. We are up on track here on a brand new course in Loudonville, France. It is fast, it is French, and it is fresh. Let's check out some of the lines right now. As we approach our second split, one of our first major line choices, there's a low developed line and a brand new high line. Line one, line two. The line above is brand new. It's cut in by the riders, it's fresh. What it does is carries more speed into the next corner. The lower developed line, the man-made line, it carries the riders around the track. But what it does, it gets you into the pocket of the rut. This rut in the berm has developed and been huge. It carries good speed in, good speed out. Over the bridge, cresting into the steep woods. This is where the gnarly stuff starts. Now we've got three lines to choose from. The outside, the rider's right is the B line. It is the smoothest, the simplest, the easiest. Now as we go left over this steep blind drop, the inside left line is probably the fastest, but it's got its wrist. There's a massive stump in the landing here, catching a lot of riders out. Greg Minar has been rumored to take the outside of the inside line and it carries great exit speed, less braking. Double lines feed you into one of the steepest parts of the track. The decision you make right here affects the next 20 seconds worth of trail. Do you go inside, inside? Do you go through the middle to carry good exit speed all the way around? Or do you take the high hero line and rocket your way down this elevator shaft of a section? The decision you've made a couple of seconds prior is what will result for this section here. The outside will cut across, the inside will go to the outside, and they all compound with speed, with smoothness, with traction. There's so many things to consider in this short section here, and it is all decided by the decision you make in two corners earlier. As you've seen, there is plenty of line choice and every decision you make has a knock-on effect to the next section and the next section. The compounding effect affects your speed, it affects your smoothness and your ability to ride this track as fast as possible. Oh, wow, what a track. Now downhill is all about the fastest time down the hill, but as you can see, all those line choices and selections and decisions have a compounding effect on our riders' speed and lines down the mountain. Which one is best? Time will tell. There you have it. Cedric, I don't think we've had as many options on track as we have <laughs> here in Ludenville, Perigou. Let's have a look at the start list for the semi-final of the women's race. Isabella Yankova, the Bulgarian, will get us underway. Then it's Vidman, Gale, Hastings, Ferguson, Ronning, Seagrave, Farina, Hemstreet, Krasnik. Then into the protected, Jonset, Bauman, Kaberu, Hoffman, and all those top three, all protected. Okay, just a correction there. It will be Vidman who will get us underway. So from this session, we are going to take 10 riders through, plus any who are protected. And we're nearly ready to go racing here at the UCI Mountain Bike World Cup in Ludenville, Peyragou in the Pyrenees in France. Semi-finals for the elite women about to get underway here. The French crowds lining the track top to bottom on one of the most formidable tracks we have seen in a long, long time in this sport. My name is Rick McLaughlin sitting alongside me for this one currently, Cedric Gracia. Cedric, this should be a belter today, shouldn't it? 
Yeah, hello everyone. It's going to be about brand new tracks, fast at the top. You need to crank today since the rain appear. You cannot cruise down and hit all those jumps. You will have to pedal to jump some of those doubles before you enter at the basically uh, the hell of the track <laughs> when it's steep. There we go, yeah. Veronica Vidman in the gate, the Italian national champion, gets ready to get us underway here in Ludenville, Peyragu, the UCI Mountain Bike World Cup 2023 is underway. So let's have a look at this formidable course here in the Pyrenees. Rain yesterday afternoon, but it has stayed dry since then. The team have armored everything up. And it is looking like an absolutely beautiful racetrack today. Yeah, exactly. And here, couple of camber. You, you see, she's already charging on the pedal because since practice, it's a lot slower. And this part have a little bit of wind. You have to watch out the wind sideways, especially on the jumps, because it happened to me and you almost got blew out of the track. This off camber really hard, but here from now on, there's no brakes. You cross the road. So fast. Yeah, yeah, but you need to keep that speed because this is really flat. You see, she's tagging. She tried to avoid to get the wind to slow down. You can breathe. Big double here and a kind of a flat corner here. You need to keep the line and it's bumpy, really bumpy. You can see the suspension moving. And yeah. this is hard there to get the momentum. Relatively smooth and fast across here, but there's not many places to save energy up top. You're riding the whole time, really trying to aim the bike into the next corner, the next rut. And you know, your brain, you know, you, you need to be focused because a little mistake there probably will take you off the track. Well, I'm happy to say that we are joined in the booth by a living legend of the sport, as well as Cedric, of course. <laughs> Miriam Nicole is with us for the Elite Women's semi-finals today. Miriam, what do you think of the track here in Ludenville? Well, that's such a good track. It feels like old school track again. And uh, yeah, it's pretty tricky. Like the condition has changed and for the girls it's gonna be pretty challenging. So I'm glad they have a race before the final to get used to these conditions. Yeah, a lot of swapping back and forth between setups. A lot of these riders were on mud tires whenever it was really, really dry and dusty, and now we're on mud tires because of the mud. Yeah, exactly. It was difficult to make the choice in the beginning, you know, when to use the right tire, half cut, full cut, um, soft compound, hard compound, but, you know, now I think they, they, they figured it out. Miriam, we're just looking at pictures of the full run here. Do you think there's more time to be made in the, the steeper bottom section in the woods on the top? Yeah, I think the top is just going to be really physical and then the pressure you get into the bottom section, that's where you can make the difference. Yeah, and how hard as well it is to be focused all the way down, like line not changing, it's steep, you can make a mistake, you need to reset. Uh, concentration is going to be a big part today, you know, you, know, you need to aim all your perfect line and yeah, you know better yeah, than anyone Yeah, exactly, else. and this, this is why a lot of people are asking why I'm not coming back, I'm just not fit yet, and to do these kind of things you have to be super fit. I'm glad she says so, <laughs> that it means I'm fit. <laughs> <laughs> no, she, she didn't say that, Cedric. Oh, she did not you. say that. Thanks, I am. I feel good now. <laughs> <laughs> you see that she's like battling, you know, foot out. Yeah. You know, a little bit like skiing when it's steep, you know, you need to push on your leg, you know, to try to get the grip. You cannot be a passenger on the bike. You need to work on the bike, especially today. Try to find the grip. And when you feel like you're losing the grip because all the pack under the tire, you need to release the brake to clean the tire again, brake again to get a better grip. This is going to be tricky as well. Miriam, nine UCI World Cup wins yourself. Where was the worst in terms of conditions? I would say Champery to 11. Yeah. That was a gnarly one and definitely the world champs in Liogang. That was not a good, good Oh, that story. was muddy. Yeah, yeah, I remember sticky, that. Sticky, sticky. <laughs> Sticky one, temporary was fun. The good news here is Vidman looking pretty clean though in terms of her kit and stuff, so the mud looks like it's clearing well. I honestly think it looks better today to ride for the girls than if it's too dry. It was hard to find this braking thing, so yeah. Ooh. Oh, hit, hit the pad, it's so hard, it's a lot of rocks there. Even in practice when it's wall dry everywhere, this little section was so sleepy. I don't know if it was the rocks or the roots I didn't see, but it was difficult. Oh, those doubles are so nice to hit. And uh, entering in the woods there. Big sand. Oh. It gets fast towards yeah. the bottom as well, doesn't it? But you've still got to be so accurate. Yeah, 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 it's all about timing as well. Boom, boom. 
So Vera was struggling in training to hit this jump, and she's going really well on it, so that's good. The last one is going to be a big challenge. Yeah, hard. Yeah, just going around that bit. So that Red Bull gap jump at the bottom into the double, really a key sector. Vidman crosses the line then with a 439.9 to get us underway. Clean run. Yeah, clean run. 439, pretty good. Well, insane work from Paulette. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's Paul a lot of work. And, uh, so much work. He's been digging clean. Phoebe Gale leaves the start hut, and we're hearing it is green at the splits so far. And it's very, very green. 15.6 seconds green for Phoebe Gale from the UK. So the youngster going well in this semi-final session. Just a reminder, if you're just joining us, Sam, we're semi-finals. We go nice for one. lovely from Phoebe Gale across there. Let's just get her over the line before we explain the format any further. 421.4, 18.4 seconds. Faster than that time of Vidman. Big run that, Miriam. I think, yeah, I think Phoebe is really good in this condition. Then I would put a, a bet on her. <laughs> <laughs> well, as Miriam, seconds, as Miriam yes. nips out to the bookies, <laughs> Jenna Hastings takes the track. She's 1.6 seconds back at the third split, but had a good top section, Cedric. Yeah, really good top. Right? I mean, so I was thinking at the top, really hard to make some time, but I saw stack as well on the guys going really fast at the top, but lost a lot of time. She lost a lot of time on split three. Like uh, Miriam say, you need to be fresh for the bottom part. Like, you know, maybe sometimes you need to accept to lose a little bit at the top to be able to deliver at the bottom of the track. Yeah. All right, she's doing doing good on split number four. Jenna Hastings going well, so we were going down to ten riders for the finals, plus any of the protected riders who are outside of that time. So. Hastings making a good claim to be in amongst them here with a time of 421.7. Two tenths of a second back on Phoebe Gale. So another good one is Louise Ferguson from Fort William leaves the Star Hut for Continental Nuke Proof Factory Racing. Let's join her and see how she is getting on here. The rider who had a massive home UCI World Championships in Scotland earlier in the year. She's six seconds back. Lou Miriam, difficult to pull back from here. Yeah, that's going to be a tricky one, the bottom section. Yeah, six seconds, it's hard on the split three. You know, you have to do something so exceptional to be able to come back in the game. 37.3 speed on the speed trap. Miriam, you're about as experienced as any of the elite women racers out there. How difficult as a racer is it when conditions are changing like this to constantly tweak setups, to leave stuff alone, to be muddy clean, muddy clean? Yeah, I think it's all about the preparation and that, that's why I'm so thankful to be in such a good team. Like, we spend the whole winter to train in this kind of condition and we are ready when it happens during racing. So the, the, the work is made before. Well, Ferguson crosses the line in 7.3 seconds back for the Scotswoman. Spent a lot of her time, a lot of her time in Queenstown last couple of years. As Frida Ronning for the Union, forged by Steel City Media, the Norwegian underway. A rider that a lot of people have been talking about this weekend going well. She's 4.7 back though at the third split, 38 miles, sorry, 38 kilometers an hour through the speed trap for the Norwegian. Look like so far everyone who tried too hard at the top is paying the price when they enter the technical session. That's maybe something, you know, some um, team manager need to tell the athlete at the top. Six. Do they do that, Miriam? Yeah, yeah, they do that, but I kind of don't really like to have info when I'm in the start <laughs> gate. Like, I did lose some race by just don't crash. Okay, I'm going to try just to don't crash. crash. Okay. <laughs> it's already something negative in your head before you start. <laughs> that's, a, that's a mantra I repeat yeah, over and over. No, so no, I don't head. want any info. Yeah, it's going to be tricky. If you don't jump that last double, you're going to lose yeah. a lot of time. 18.4 back for running. That is the thing that... That last double, but here comes Tani Seagrave for the Canyon Collective FMD. She's on track, second last time out in Andorra. The British rider still making her way back to racing after that big concussion. At She's 2.8 faster yeah. at the second split, though. What's well, huge? 2.8, and she had a different line there. She she tried to be more round, carry more speed, exit speed on the corner. Today are going to be really important. You need to carry speed all the way down. 
Tani used to the merch, she loved this, so that's kind of good that the conditions changed for her. Yeah, she basically grew up in Morzine. That's uh, it. <laughs> of course. Yeah, if and you grew up there. Well. Yeah. <laughs> and well. You know the rain. Woo! Oh, five, five seconds down. faster at the third split Woo! for Tani Seagrave. Yep. Back in the game. Between Morzine and Wales, there aren't really many places wetter, other than the deck of a submarine. But you see, she exited the speed, she don't have to crank hard. Seagrave looking good here. She's not protected as well, so she does need to get a wriggle on and get herself into that final. And well composed. You see upper body straight, looking forward, uh, uh, ahead, aiming the line she want to hit, and really, really easy on the break. That's what you want today. Definitely one of the riders, Miriam. The conditions will suit as we see her go 6.7 yeah, faster now. Yeah, she built some confidence last weekend with her first podium back after this concussion, so she's getting there. What difference does that first podium back after a spell of injury make? Like, you know you, you're back in the game. That's really what you're waiting for, and this will make a huge difference. Well, let's see the time. She doesn't do that double, but she has been green the whole way down. Seagrave crosses the line with a 4.14.2, yes. 7.2 seconds faster. Great run. She doesn't even look tired. No, no. <laughs> she looks... She look it looked almost easy for her to go down. It was never in danger, really composed. Yeah. Loved well, it. Fifth last time out in Palar and Sala Andorra for this woman. Eleonora Farina of Italy, the reigning European champion. Missed a lot of racing at the start of the year. Seven tenths of a second back at the second split, but we know that is not panic stations. No, it's in touch. You have to be in touch on the split number two to be able to attack the track there. This section, so yes. ferocious, Different so steep. Line. It's like three line we saw with Josh, but I think it's even more now since the rain appear. I think it's two more line who developed than we will see through the riders. This section really hard with the rock and it's bringing you down so hard to, gra to catch that little rat, you know, and they're so small, you know, and it's dark, it's not easy to see. You know, in a dry condition, you see like different uh, dirt color, but today it's all brown and it's, <laughs> it's hard. We've talked a lot already about line choice. It's, I mean, some tracks we go to, it's fairly one line, but Miriam, there's yeah. just different options the whole way yeah, down this track. Yeah, that's why people love this track and there is like many different lines, but Again, physically, it's so important because to be able to choose the best line, you have, to, you have to be fresh. And I've heard my teammates saying, like, the top section is really gnarly. You, you come into the bottom one really tired. And um, will, will racers, I mean, if you're obviously you're on your race run. Will you sometimes mix those line choices up a bit and go to something else if it just looks better on that day or is a race run locked in, you know where you're going? Yeah, that's why training are for. So you, you make a decision normally before you run, but if you're a good rider like Cedric, <laughs> anything can happen. Yeah, when you don't have the skills anymore, you take what's coming first. <laughs> Well, Eight let's get Farina oh, back no. just slides out before that Lost double. She Lost was eight seconds back, but we take 10 through from this semi-final, plus any protected outside lat. So Farina, oh, she'd done the hard work. The fish was in the boat. She crosses the line 17 seconds back. Oh. Disappointment. Here comes Gracie Hemstreet, though, from Canada. Miriam, tell us how impressed you are with Gracie Hemstreet this season. What a year. Yeah, I mean, like, she's the one. You know, like, she, she's been growing up in Canada, and this condition is, like, a bit like at home, I guess. So she has such a big style. Like, I love watching her on her bike. We yeah. mentioned it last time out in Andorra, but that crash in Val Soli Trentino, where she got back on the bike and then set faster splits after that, that yeah. tells you the class of the athlete, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. She knows how to ride a bike. I think Miriam, she's right there. The dirt is similar in Canada, and uh, everything is kind of similar here. She's definitely comfortable on the bike. You can see she attacks. She's not like following just the bike. She's making decisions, she's aggressive. It's one thing we've seen Valley Hall do a lot this season, isn't it? She looks at one with oh, the nice bike. She doesn't, she doesn't look forced or that she's chasing it. Yeah. She just looks, everything's all of a piece. Yeah, one piece with the bike, that's what we saw with Valley this year. She's not fighting the bike. She's like one piece going down and most of the time wide open. <laughs> yeah. Valley Hall this season, Miriam, has just been a wrecking ball, hasn't she? She's been crazily good. I think like she gets this confidence and anything can happen. Do I think we're going to get lots of surprise today for I final. I have this that, feeling yeah. about that. <laughs>
<laughs> it does feel that way, doesn't it? Yeah. What about what about on a hundred percent Miriam Nicole against Valley Hall? Oh. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, watching this race. <laughs> <laughs> Would you have liked it out there today? Would that have suited you? Would the conditions have suited you today? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, not today oh, because... Oh, oh, oh. oh. Hem Street just bobbling yeah. over that. Yes, really yeah. Final yeah. double. Hem Street over the line, fourth, 12.9 seconds back. So fourth position. I really hope it tries out to be just for this jump to be easier. Monica Hrasnik came across the line in her final practice run, said the track is good, nodded her head and cracked on. So she's enjoying the conditions out there, the Slovenian. She's seven tenths of a second quicker at the second split. Choosing the inside line with uh, hitting the berm at the bottom to use the berm to get that free speed out instead of fighting the off camber all the way up a different line. I think that's clever today. It's tricky in that higher up camber section. It may be a more direct route, but you have to kind of wait on the bike to grip a lot. Like it is two choices. Either you go straight in the chute, get the berm or fight the off camber and hope for the best. Then this is what you prefer. Prasnik then. Oh, she's 1.5 back at the third split. So she's making a good case though to get into that top 10 to go through from the semis to the finals. Definitely good top, you know, because you, when you're like 0 7 at the top, means like you've been charging and pedaling. Oh. Yeah, you see it's you greasy can see there. see how greasy it is down yeah, that chute. That little river there, it's shiny. It means like water is still coming out from there. This this is tricky here. Yeah, you really. can see the ropes are really slippery. So yeah. Monica must miss Camille, so she might be riding with <laughs> Camille's, Camille's strength today. And this is it. They've done really good job this winter, training in the middle of France at Coulon's place. So she's ready for those kind of conditions. And she rides a really good bike. Incredible. The work of the suspension made from Fox and, you know, like everyone is working so hard to make the bike working perfectly today. Yeah, sixth in the overall for Monica. Rasnik at the minute, she's a couple of seconds back, just creases that double, cases it, sorry, as she heads down the line in two seconds. Yeah. Back. As we head back to the top for Millie on set from the Canyon Collective factory team. Oh, big gear out of the gate. Twelfth in the overall at the minute then. Millie Yonset, four seconds back in the elite women's semi-final here. She had a big year out of the game. How important it is as well to I have think the perfect. She missed her pedal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so hard to clip after because the dirt here is like clay. If you put your foot down and the dirt go on your clay, you have to tap on the pedal to be able to clip in again. Especially with this kind of dirt. Do you think, Miriam, some people are going to use flat pedals today? I don't think conditions are bad enough to okay. wear a flat pedal. So it, it looks like kind of really good to ride. Yes. Like, <laughs> makes me want to ride. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what we want to hear. <laughs> Somebody get Miriam a bike, please. The commentary booth, Miriam a bike. <laughs> Helmet, goggles, gloves, good to go. So I saw Mille clearing the last jump this morning. Is she going to make it now? I saw that as well. She pushed back up to have another go yeah. at it, didn't she? And nailed it. Nine seconds back, though, for Yonset, the Norwegian. But if she clears that last jump, We've seen the last few riders have problems with it. She could uh, put a big... Yeah, you can you can jump three just with a jump. Three or four, easily. Yep. Oh, you see, and she's fighting there to get, you know, to slow down the bike. Super greasy through that last little wood section as Millie on set heads down to the, water, the bottom of the track here in Luden VLP Ragu at the UCI Mountain Bike World Cup. You could see the bike floating a little bit. I don't know what kind of tire she'd been using, like half cut, full on spike. Looked like the bike was floating a little bit more than the older woman's. Look how glassy it is through there. I'm glad they have that big rat there. Yeah. Here we go then, over the Red Bull drop for Yonsei. Can she, oh! oh! Just, yeah! Oh, what That's great. amazing. What Millie Yonsei over that big double and crosses the line in fifth. So, 12 seconds back, but crucially, in fifth place with four to go, that should be enough for Yonsei. Lisa Bauman then from Switzerland leaves the start hot for Clemenceau, Lesor, young rider making waves in 2023. 
So Lisa, it doesn't have much experience in downhills. And today, I guess, like, experience is going to be important, but she's really talented. So that's the kind of new, fresh girls we see in downhill, and that's going to be interesting to see how she managed to ride in the mud. Yeah, just try for down. down there a little bit, foot out. Uh, definitely fighting here, foot out. Sometimes, you know, that means a lot. Is it too fast or losing the front, the grip? How important it is to carry speed after all those corners for timing. You don't want to go under speed. The track is a lot harder under speed. You need to have that perfect speed, then it looks like the track is a lot easier. Easy to say, seven, hard to translate. Seven and a half back though, so this run moving away from Bowman slightly now. You can see between split two and three is a huge difference in the slip section. Yeah, that's Just why she was Just sticking to the inside there. Yeah, avoiding oh. that little... <laughs> Greasy, like water thing. A little river. Through the left hander. Really hard to, you know, finish early here to get inside because it's two light, one and outside, one inside. But you want to definitely get the inside over the um, over the tree. Yeah, and conditions now 8.7 back for Bowman, but conditions looking pretty comparable the whole way down, which yeah. is what you want. Look yeah. at Prime so far. She had a big time in quality on that last jump. I hope she cleared it better. I saw it live, it. but she saved it so good though. Yeah. Here we go. Bowman down towards the big double at the bottom of this track. Oh. Nope, goes around it. But does so cleanly, so Bowman down the line there. Bowman crosses the line, 424.0 in the fifth, so that should be good for Lisa Bowman. Free to go then at the top and one of the women that a lot of people are talking about this weekend marine cabiru france's big hope for this race can she manage to save energy at the top how do you, no losing too much time though oh. she's a second back at yep. the second split how do you rate how do you rate marine's chances this weekend yeah marine? marine is super fit like she's training really hard and she she really wanted so like, I'm, I'm really hoping that she can do good and there's three girls left now, it's going to be a big, big challenge, but Marine is definitely into it. So, Cabiru, national champion of France, she is protected, so she ca she will automatically make her way through to the final. So, exciting run this, but with the conditions as changeable, really interested to see what time she puts down. And the bound on the brakes, she needed, yeah, she, yeah. she looked too much on the brakes too, for too long of a time. This is what is hard on this track, you need to go tack tack on the brake you know like tempo not falling in sleep on the brake you fall in sleep on the brake this is horrible for timing and this is what it looks hard right now for marine she's but, vibe up but also this is the first time that i see and feel the semi-final the day in the same day of final so i guess like it's kind of normal to save a bit of energy and well yes. she's through isn't she she's protected she knows yeah. she's yeah, maybe yeah. just you, conserve a you bit you want to aim for this point but you still want to keep some some freshness for the final too it was a big show nice one we've done here going fast there but Tani did a really good run. run like my solid, bet yeah. on Tani today I'm sure that she will be pretty good well, there you have it there Miriam's back in Tani Seagrave today she's in the hot seat currently in the semi-final for the elite women Marine Cabiru going around that final double jump heads towards the line Marine Cabiru 8.9 seconds back in fifth place but get ready the Hoff is getting ready to leave the start hut. Nina Hoffman for the Santa Cruz Syndicate, the winner of the last round in Pal Aronsalva, Andorra. She's confident, she's fit. So powerful out of the gates. Really, really physically fit Nina Hoffman as well. That'll help her today. She's 3.7 seconds faster than Seagrave at the second split. So that's a lot of timing. 3.7, that's a lot of time. 40k an hour on the speed trap. Definitely death grip there. We have we spoke to her earlier in the weekend, Miriam, and she had that swagger of a winner. I know. It's hard to replace that, isn't it? <laughs> I know. And it reminds me when she won in Lusa 2020, like Five this down, condition. Sorry. Whoa, she's Five on seconds. It. Five seconds faster, Hoffman. So Nina Hoffman fancies making it two on the bounce. Whoa, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. 
she's on the limit sometime. But were we, were, sorry, were we just talking about how you keep some in reserve for the finals <laughs> run? She's not. Yeah. She she's don't see not. anything in the bag. Last weekend I heard saying that she realized that braking makes the bike work less good. So it, it, <laughs> she, she's like, she's learning to, learning to don't brake. Then, then she took the pads off. She's increased time as well. She's found another six tenths of a second. Hoffman then down towards the bottom of the track here in Lunenville, Perigu, and looking extremely dangerous in the semi-finals. You see the way she contracted the bag, dropping the hill, her feet, the hills, all the way down to control the bag, the bike. Really impressive. Oh, Hoffman, off and that drop, makes the double. Yeah, this is going to be a fast time from Nina Hoffman, our new benchmark time, I'm sure. 5.7 seconds fastest. Really good, right? Than Tani Seagrave, Nina Hoffman. So let's head the top. There's one rider left up there now. And it is the woman who is just beginning to dominate 2023. Valentina Hull from Austria attacks out of the gate. She's not leaving anything in reserve for this semi-finals run, but look at that. Well, she didn't win in Valno. She won One to and a half point. seconds yeah. at the second split. She's found a second and a half at the top in this semi-finals. 39.3 on the speed trap. So slightly slower than Hoffman through the speed trap, but not much. Bike just getting moved around, it's full of holes now that section, yeah. isn't it? So consistent. Yeah, like you said, the braking there was, you see the turbulence on the bike means like rocks, roots, everything start to appear. Oh, 50 feet, one wheel at the top of the rock, the other wheel at the bottom. 5.6 <laughs> seconds faster at the third split. Yeah, she's charging from now on. Miriam, whenever you get on a roll like Valley's on, the confidence must just be yeah, huge. It helps a lot, but she didn't win, win last weekend, so that's going to be a, an important race for her to win this, this semi-final. She wants to make a point. Yeah. yeah. Lisa Peg Hoffman back, but... Oh, nicely done there. Nicely through there, yeah. Closing in on this UCI Mountain Bike World Cup overall title. As I say, second place in the points. Camille Balanche not with us this weekend. We wish her all the best in her recovery. 5.7 seconds faster now. Hull finding more and more time. Flat out of that drop. She brake heavy just before the drop though, but released the brake, but she had it too. Hull then off the Red Bull drop. Nails oh, the big double. Nice one. nice one. Very nice. Really high, and she can use the corner. Valentina Hall goes fastest in in the elite women's semi final. 6.3 seconds faster for the Austrian. Nina Hoffman second. Tani Seagrave third. Points. That's a huge gap. Yeah, it's a good, huge gap. Good for points. That would be mentally hard to swallow. <laughs> In the same day, within there two hours, I would be like, there's a, job. There's a, there was a puff of the cheeks from Miriam there when she crossed the line, but let's watch Valentina Hall Cedric tell us about this. You see, the body language means that oh, she's in the corner, but the shoulders mean like, I want more. I, she was already aiming for the other corner, and when she decided to go, she just really did the brakes. Control it, and when she find like the perfect balance, she just release the brake and get so much speed. Miriam, look at the eyes. Look, the dirt flying. Bike looks clean though. No, I'm, the condition looks pretty good. I'm happy. Let's get the results of the elite women's semi-final here. Then Valentina Hall, who was protected, goes faster than the protected. Nina Hoffman, Tani Seagrave, third fastest. Harasnik, fourth. Phoebe Gale, fifth. Jenna Hastings, sixth. Marine Caberu also protected seventh. Bowman, Johnson, and Hemstry are your top ten. That means we lose Ferguson running. Farina, Vidman, and Yankova, who did not start. That uh, that was a pretty interesting semi-final, wasn't it? Yeah. There's a lot of questions to be answered up there. Look at the replay. But I still think there's going to be surprise today. Yep. Well, as we bid adieu to Miriam Nicole as she heads off, we get to watch some shots of Valentina Hall just absolutely beasting her way down the track here. So comfortable in the air when it's steep. She basically has the all package, really. She's good everywhere. Yeah. Like some people, maybe it's better, better than her in some parts, but she's all around. Look at the tire mark on the look pants. At, look at the head already turning yeah, the yeah. next corner. That's why she does so good with her head, her shoulders, body language. So after semi-finals then, here are the elite women's standings. Hull, Balanche, Hoffman, Kaberu, Hrasnik are the top five. Then 
Afferton also missing. Hemstreet, Seagrave, Blewett, Gale. Millie Yonsa in 12th now. But we are getting ready to get the elite men's semi finals underway here in Ludenvale. Peira Gu on one of the most interesting tracks we've had in a long time. It's fast and frenetic from the top, more line choices than you're ever likely to see. Crowds filling up here in the Pyrenees, filling up this track. Here are the standings then, currently as they shape up. Finn Isles leads the way, Thibaut de Prella, Jackson Goldstone after that win in Italy earlier in the season is third. Lloyd Bruni, Lars Verge, Andreas Cole, Brosnan, Greenland's 11th, Bernard Kerr, Minar, Dunn, Vidal, Walker, Hart, Suarez, Alonso in 18th. Here's Finn Isles to tell us what he makes of it. Really happy to be in the leader's jersey. I feel like this year I've been working a lot of my consistency as I have been over the last few years and just like focus for the race runs or all the runs that are timed and just being on it when I need to be. And I feel like this year has been really good. I mean, I got a little lucky last week with the weather and everything, but I guess that's kind of racing and uh, I'm yeah, stoked where I'm at. Feel like it's been a couple years since we've been to like a brand new, brand new track. So the top of the track's pretty flat, a lot of pumping. As you kind of come over the crest, it just rolls down and the track basically goes like that. And I think that's what makes it so fun because you have such a contrast between the two parts of the track that you come out of the top and you're like, oh, that was really cool. You have a flow of yourself. And then as soon as it rolls over, you're like straight into the hard stuff and you're already warm and you're already focused. And I think that that's what makes it so fun because you have the warm up, and then it's just down to the fun part of the track. I feel like after the first two races, I knew I was in the hunt for the overall just with my riding and the consistency that I was showing. And then after Val de Sol being only 12 points back, I was like, definitely something that was in my mind. It was like, if I ride really well one weekend, I can jump into the front. If the person in front of me has a bad weekend, then I can sort of jump in front. But I think it's one of those things where you just have to take it one day at a time at the races and not focus on any of the stuff that's going on behind just you and your bike. So I think coming into race day, all I'll focus on is the riding part of it. But I don't know, it's definitely in the back of my mind, but I think right now there's nothing too much to think about. I think that's more of like end of the season. If there's only a couple points, it's something to think about there. Well, Finn Isles still waiting for that first win of the season, Cedric, but certainly more than comfortable in the overall leader's jersey. Yes, I think what happened in uh, Palarinsal was really important for him and Kevin is making it, you know, working step by step. He want more, but he just need to work it. So let's have a look at the semi-final for the start, the semi-final start list then. Loic Martin will get us underway. Fittingly a Frenchman. Oni Oranio, Finn be after him then. Joe Braden, Greg Williamson, Davide Palazzari, a ride, Italian rider having a great season. In the second page there, Jack Redding, Baptiste Pierron, Davide Capello, another fast Italian. Dakota Norton, Benjamin Svar. Cade Edwards has been tearing this place apart all week and will do so again today. No doubt, Oshin O'Callaghan, young Irishman having a great season. Remy Meyer-Smith, another big, big talent from Australia. Jacob Dixon, also in there. Then it's Dunn, Minar, Hart, Vidal. Ethan Craig, sixth last time out in Andorra. What can he do today? Hartenstern, Brosnan, first of... Can you collect the riders and Kerr, Walker, Estac, Hatton, Greenland, Dylan Maples, what a qualifying session he had yesterday. Vergier, Shaw, Isles, Kolb, all protected. Then it's Deprella, Bruni, and interestingly, the unprotected Coulange, who was scintillating in qualifying yesterday. He was spectacular as well with Estac uh, uh, in the gas. I, I was so impressed about those guys. We're going to see new guys today. I have a feeling that it's not going to be the usual race today. We're going to some, some people are going to give 100% and take the chance today. Yeah, you just get the feeling that with all the changeable conditions and the quality of this track here in Luden VLP Ragu, that someone outside of the usual suspects might just fancy doing something spectacular. So we're getting ready for the elite men's semi-final where we will go down to 30 riders plus protected anybody off the protected riders who are outside off that there's jackson goldstone 
a man who has been a pioneer in a lot of the big gaps and a lot of the big sins this weekend. What do you make of his chances, Cedric? I saw him spectacular in the dry, uh, in the wet, maybe a little bit different. I think uh, he can do good, of course. I mean, he's one of the best. Well, we're almost ready to go racing here in Ludenvale Perigu at the UCI Mountain Bike World Cup. What? What an afternoon's racing we've got ahead of us. This one should be fascinating. Fascinating. Loic Martin then from France leaves the star hot and gets us underway for the elite men's semi-final. Cedric Crossy, talk us through this course here in the Pyrenees. All right, this course at the top of Camber, a lot of jump. You need to have the perfect timing. Today it's a little bit more wet than obviously less fast than practice. Then you need to crank hard at the top. Be careful of all those new lines, especially like big double here. You have a corner here of camber and another one here that you see it's bumpy already. Big off camber. And from now on, after that corner, it's full on. No fingers on the brake, or at least not touching the brakes to carry speed. Look how fast. Yeah, look is the going bike there. working hard there. And we have the drone following, barely falling here. Following him, it's so fast there. The speed they hit that ramp by on the road, it sounds like they've been dropped out of a helicopter. It's just <laughs> bang. Yeah, yeah it's it, it just so fast there. But you know, they're really active. You're thinking, okay, it's not steep, but it's so hard to get keep the momentum. You need to attack the track. You, you cannot afford to show up into the steep with two seconds back, you know? Like, that's why you need to crank, like, at least right, like, right there. It's a little bit of a uphill too there. You need to crank hard, and this is hard here. Double, double into a corner with another double. This is really technical there. Hitting that corner and another the whoop section. So this is a stall wall jump that um, so many of the big names have been trying to get across all week. And speaking of big names, we have been joined in the booth by the man himself, Aaron Gwynn. Aaron, good to see you back at the races. Are, are you that upset that you're missing the track like this? Uh, yeah, I think today for sure. I mean, the track's coming along now. I think yesterday morning watching the juniors try to ride down, I was like, eh, I'm all right <laughs> hanging in the parking lot. But it's uh, we got ourselves a race, boys. It's looking good. And uh, yeah, it's tough to be watching, but nice to be in here with you guys. And oh, it, uh, straight across. Chill. Martin, straight across that off camber section there. Would you agree with us, Aaron, in that it kind of feels like it feels a bit different today. It feels like somebody outside of those big names could just do something special. Yeah, 100%. I mean, every time you got a weather race, you get some mud. It's, uh, I mean, it's so hard. There's so many guys going fast now that I feel I could win. And when it rains, you get those specialists come out, and it just throws another 10 guys into the mix that could win. So it's, I have no idea how to call it today. I'm just excited to be watching. Well, we're excited to have you with us, Cedric. Tell us about the steeper than the second half of this track is where it really comes alive, isn't it? Comes alive, but at the same time, you need to have that energy, you know? Like, you don't want to blow everything at the top, you know? Then the energy today is going to be so important when it starts to get steeper and steeper. But you need to attack the track today. You cannot cruise down on the semi-final. If not, you're not making through. That those guys need to throw everything in in the semi-final. Yeah, it's a tricky one. The semi-finals, Aaron, we just saw a really interesting elite women's semi-final. You kind of want to put a marker down, but then we saw Valley Hole just absolutely detonate, it, didn't we? Yeah, 100%. I mean, even Tawny's run looked incredible. She missed that last jump, and I was thinking, man, if she can get that, she's going to be right in the mix. Whoa, oh, big set. <laughs> oh, boy. Richie's on fire. Let's go. <laughs> Let's yeah, go, I, time. I, I was just about to point out that like, Martin is not protected and will be throwing everything at this, and then he goes and does that. <laughs> I don't think he care at this point. <laughs> I think that's something really hard. We were chatting with our boys about it because they haven't been, uh, they've had a couple rough races, and they're not protected, and you find yourself in this weird position where you have guys like this that, that aren't protected or maybe guys that wouldn't normally qualify and they're this is their race run they have to throw everything at this to try to make it into a final and then you got, got guys that aren't protected that should make a final and they're riding more conservative and it's man it's tricky let's get Lloyd Martin over the line in a free 51.558 for him he definitely gave everything he had. It was impressive. Just for context then, Benoit Coulange was 3.29.3 in qualifying. Here comes Oni Ranio though for the Pole Factory Racing. Young Finnish rider getting faster every time oh. out. 4.7 oh. seconds faster. Oh. 
That's quite a bit of time. 42 for one on a speed trap. Aaron, it just feels like the depth of talent in this elite men's field gets deeper every single season. We got the likes of Oni Ranio from Finland just coming through and putting 4.7 seconds faster on the board in the semis. It is, it's crazy. I look at the results list now in the top 60 and I don't feel like I even recognize sometimes maybe 20 of the guys that are in there. There's there's all these young guys coming up. They're all so good. I mean, as you see, here we go. Yeah, that Ranio was perfectly done. Crosses the line, 347.7, 3.8 faster than Martin. And Martin was not exactly hanging around up there. So big result from the young Finn. Will it be enough to get him free? We're going for 30 riders plus any protected as Aaron Gwynn takes an audible intake of breath as Joe Breeden leaves to start his teammate on intense factory racing. Come on, boy. <laughs> he needs this one. Yeah, half a second faster <laughs> at the first he, clip. He's charging, though. Yeah, he's been riding good, man. He's had a couple of uh, rough he, breaks, he really I know. He has, hasn't he? Yeah, he loves this track. He loves these conditions. He's got everything it takes. It just needs to come together. So, yeah, this is looking good. 1.2 back at the fourth split, though, for Breeden. It can be a cruel sport like that, can't it? You can feel like you're going faster every weekend, and it just doesn't come together for yeah. whatever reason. And it's always hard, you know, you question yourself, and you're like, why? And sometimes you go through it, you don't understand how. You go, let's stop that on the speed for 1.2. Breeden then, over the big double, heads down the line. The young man from the UK, what is he going to stop the clock at? A 3.49.5, 1.8 seconds slower than the time off Ranio. Probably good as well to have you in the pit, you know, like... Yeah, trying to help the boys, trying to be up there in practice, show them some lines, do some filming for them, help however I can. It's fun to oh. be uh, productive here. Well, speaking of human beings who are used to going fast in the mud, Greg Williamson is on track and he's seven tenths of a second up at the third split. The big man from Tour, outside Inverness in the UK. He's another guy, man. I think he's such an incredible rider and the results really have not shown, I think, where yes. he's at right now. I think there's there's a lot of big guys. His teammate as well, Matt Walker. Yeah. You know, he's a guy that could win a race, and you know we've had a hard time qualifying. So it's today could really be a, a switch whoa, up. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Coming in hot <laughs> here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Slings it right that trip. Three tenths of a second faster for Williamson. Is he going to go green the whole way down? Now nails the big double. Heads for the line. Williamson on the hunt for the hot seat. Crosses the line. Six tenths of a second faster. That'll do, Greg. That yeah, was pretty good, saving that, you know, on a big off camber. <laughs> wow. This it's good, as you can see, these guys are starting to push, and you can you can lose a little traction, the lines are starting to change up. It's just getting better. Uh, Bandera, though, we're here and has been down. He has had a crash, so just getting himself down here. He was a tenth of a second up at the second split, though. Like Aaron say, they have to throw down a good run, <laughs> like almost a hundred percent run on some like. So is that what you're saying? It's almost more confusing if you're, you know, if you're one, of, you know, the top top twenty in the world. Like you're not throwing the kitchen sink at it like some of the guys in the lower order are. You're riding a bit more within yourself, and does that create a kind of a psychological problem? Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, you want to either be somebody that's protected, that you can throw everything at it, go for points, and if you crash, you know you're still in. Or if you you know you got to have your best run to qualify. Oh, here we go. Hey, 1.4 seconds faster now, 42 kilometers an hour through the speed trap. That's up there, the sort of speed that, you that, were doing, that's that's why, Yeah, I was like 32 <laughs> or 28 in a dry condition. <laughs> uh, you were moving up there. We all saw it. Don't worry. Four tenths, so he's lost a second somewhere, but it's still green. Still green. You know, it's a fine balance and not losing too much energy on the top, but you, de you cannot cruise at the top. But today, it's going to take a little bit of everything to make it to the final. But definitely... Let go the bike today. Let go the bike. Oh, but there I was on the side there. Yep, just gets out of his way. 1.7 seconds faster now, Chapelet. Right. Release the brakes when he needed to. Oh, nice. Explodes off that drop. Hangs over the rider's right hand side and dips down over the crest and into the right hander. Can he good speed there? Heads for the red book out then. Can he go into the hot seat? Simon Chapelet in France then. Just slides out in that last corner. Cross the line. 2.8 seconds nice. faster. After the Double. He went so quick there and so comfortable. And the last jump, see Ian Clip foot out like motocross style. In the air, yeah. yeah. In the air, like ra -ta -ta -ta. That was nice. <laughs> Dean Lucas. Dean Lucas in the full white kit. Always a bold move when it's a mud race. Not point eight seconds slower, though. I love it. Always love the full white kit in the rain. <laughs>
<laughs> that, that's showing confidence there. Jared Graves used to do a great line in it, and it guaranteed a deluge. Yeah. Yeah. Get around the White Sox yeah. and everything. I'm <laughs> like, buddy, you're going to be coded. <laughs> you don't pay for your washing machines. <laughs> I just live in the hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> Dean Lucas, 2.2 seconds oh. down for the big Australian. Carry a little bit carry out on the line here. It's a tricky one. You don't want to override this track. You can see the guys that are really carrying that speed, getting the exits of the corners. It's important. And I think, Aaron, um, you know, the track is going Third. to be faster and faster, too. Yeah. Third fastest for Dean Lucas. That is a thing I was just about to ask you. Can you override this track as Roger Vieira comes out? You can push the ruts too far. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think as it starts to dry out, too, it's always tricky because some, some sections of the track, you get kind of false sense of confidence. You're like, oh, we got good grip here. And yeah, then you, you see they're crossing yeah. the river, and like all of a sudden, it's, the bike is swinging a little bit. Yep, you'll turn it on, and then you'll come into the next section thinking, oh, this is where the grip is, and then it won't be there again. So you're constantly trying to like anticipate and adjust all the way down. Two seconds on the split number three. Lost a little bit more time on split number four. Yeah, had that horror crash in Val Sole Trentino when the bike split in half on Vieira, but... Oh, he was fighting that corner. Yeah. You can see the front wheel start sliding. Had a couple of bites at it. 3.9 seconds back to Brazilian. Does all his racing in the UK. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Crosses yes. the line of a big manual. You love to see it. 4.8 seconds back in fifth place for Roger Vieira. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh. Let's go, Brookie. <laughs> Come on, boy. On track. Brooke McDonald, and this is the sort of rider who may just fancy a crack at this one today. Brooke McDonald from New Zealand, well, he's 4.4 back, coming back from injury, but a rider of his class, you never know with Brooke. It's just unbelievable the way, you know, everything he went through and just be at this level again. Amazing, losing a little bit of the grip here, foot out. Yeah, if you guys haven't seen the story on Brooke, I uh, highly recommend checking him out. He had a huge crash at Mount St. Anne a few years ago. Basically left him kind of in a wheelchair for a while. He couldn't walk. He had to completely rehab himself back and even be able to take a step. Now he's back on the bike, charging. It's, uh, it's incredible what he's been able to pull off. And still one of the most aggressive. Yes, impressive. McDonald over the line then in the eight, 7.3 seconds. So just a reminder, we are going for 30 riders out of the semi-final. The 30 fastest will go through to the final, plus any protected riders outside of that. Here comes Valentin Chatonet as we jump on board our live drone for the first time. Cedric, this bit, timing's crucial, isn't it? Timing is crucial, but at the same time, today you need to crank between uh, the jumps, but you don't want to lose all the energy because this, you need everything you have. <laughs> you need as much energy level <laughs> there to attack the track at the bottom point. It's a lot of time to make or lose if you cooked. 100%. These tracks are sometimes the hardest ones. I mean, when you got to go flat out, 45 seconds of flat track out of the gate, you really kind of empty the tank. You got to be able to max the heart rate out and then still recover and ride the bottom well. You can't afford to go slow up there to save energy. So, you oh. really see the strong guys. Just overshot that slightly, Chatonet. Into second place, though, 1.3 seconds back. So, Chapelet's time really standing up. That looks yes, good. A good yeah. one. Oliver Zwar then for Canyon Collective FMD. Swedish national champion. This is a good ride. He's uh, riding through a little bit of an injury right now too. I saw him last week. I think he dislocated his shoulder in practice. Wow. Cool. He still raced, which was crazy. And he's back out here again now. It's it's crazy when you when you know these riders, so many of them have these stories. You would never know when you watch them on TV, but the things they've been through you know, in practice, or the week before, the injuries, the, you know, bikes, whatever it is they're dealing with, there's there's always a unique story. Oh, nicely done. I always think nice. if you're on a flight and there's one of those, you know, there's our doctor on board, the second best is a downhill racer, because everyone knows all the injuries and all the healers <laughs> and the procedures and foot out off that jump then. So that left-hander, maybe just crumbling oh. a bit, not point eight seconds back from what we can see on our time and screens. Good run from Zwar into second place, but that left-hander into the finish area, just getting eaten up a wee bit. Yes, yeah, a little bit, the, the, the top of the berm is a little bit destroyed there. But like say, um, Aaron, you know, like uh, injuries today, especially shorter, really tough when it's steep. Yeah, yeah, this track's relentless. It gets steeper as you go. 
So as you get tired, especially with your arms and your hands, you're breaking harder at the bottom when you're wore out. Oh, here we go. 2.8 seconds oh. faster for Palazzari. This man's been on fire here all week. Some unbelievable shots off him completely sideways over the jumps. But now he's putting it together in the semifinals here. 2.1 seconds. And two key to murder faster than everyone at the speed trap. It's, li it's like he's hanging off the back of a big 450F, isn't it? Yeah. Big motocross With bike. a brand new tire. Yeah. <laughs> Palazzari then over the jump around that left hander down the line Davide Palazzari goes fastest by 2.3 seconds great run from the Italian national champion right really what composed think? all the way down like late breaking and wow you think that's going to get done top 30 <laughs> I think. No one ever asks us that. Yeah. <laughs> I usually ask him. You, you, you probably know more than us. <laughs> Where's the bubble at? I, that's going to be pretty good, I think. I think that's going to that's going to that stand up. I think. Philo Jean then. The South African. One of two racing brothers. A six, six point and a five. half back. Will, uh, 44.7 though on the speed trap. That's, that's for the speed trap. Full on. Will. Aaron, will will riders know a time? Will you will you have a ballpark time that you're gunning for that you think will be that bubble? I think it completely depends on the rider. I know some riders that I've talked to, they are always looking at the time. They're always shooting for a time in their mind. I've always kind of been the opposite. I just shoot to have my best run. Oftentimes, I have no idea what my times are. I'm just focused on the track. I think there's different ways to do it. That was nice. Yeah, fellow Jean down over the line, 9.4 seconds back in 10th place. Yeah, I mean. It's different strokes, isn't it? I know that um, Sam Hill famously could sort of could ballpark a time quite accurately from fairly early on in the weekend. There's Danny Hart. Speaking of riders that might just go mad today, <laughs> not mine. Here we go, the local boy. We, uh, we're neighbors now on the East Coast. It's been really fun hanging I out with Chris. I thought you meant he lived in France. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a team you have, yeah. Chris Grice. Really mature head on young shoulders. Yeah, he's another rider, man. He's been through a lot the last couple of years as far as injuries go. A lot of hype behind him coming up. He's been able to kind of regather as an elite now. Uh, had a really good off season. He uh, even beat me at a race this off season. <laughs> even me on it. So it's, to beat him yeah. in, <laughs> it's been good to see. So oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Oh. Close just getting stood up slightly in that rut. You can see exactly what we were talking about there. If you catch the edge of that rut, it can just stand you up, knock you off balance. Grice then, yeah, that left-hander looking difficult down the line. Chris Grice, 7.6 seconds back. Came down this practice run, said it's fun up there. Something you have to realize on those uh, big rat. You know, like motocross, uh, they're wide, big tires. But here, it looked like the top, when they go deep, just fall in. Yep. Austin Dooley, another American rider, getting some good experience on the road and going well this year so far. Aaron, what do you make of him? Yeah, Austin's awesome, man. Just like Chris, I mean, they ride together a lot. We've been riding together a lot through the offseason. One of the nicest kids you'll ever meet. Uh, and just solid, man. Every weekend, it's like he's right there, kind of between 20th and 35th a lot of times. It's just, I feel like he's doing it the right way. He doesn't have a lot of crashes. He rides within his limits, and he's just solid every single weekend. It's what I definitely like to see. This looks like a good one, too. Yeah. Two, yeah. two up. Uh, two back, sorry, on uh, last speed time. 3.9 seconds back then for Austin Dooley from Rancho Cucamonga. Toby Meek then, young rider from New Zealand. I should say another fast young rider from New Zealand. We're seeing New Zealand really dominate the, the junior ranks of Three out of three medals at the UCI World Championships go into their junior women. Toby Meek in the elite class now, trying to make his presence felt on that. Pretty stacked MS Mondraker set up. A lot of big names on that squad now, growing every year. Marcus Stuckel, of course, nobody more experienced in terms of running the team than the big man himself. This looks like a pretty close one. It's hard to call it, but there's going to be a bubble in here that's going to be real close to where these guys are coming in. Yeah, Meek, it's just, it seems that he's got some type time back between three and four, but he's definitely lost a chunk somewhere. It just nods ahead off that drop. He's fighting for it. Yep. 4.4 seconds back, but still sixth place. So completely different from what we saw in uh, Palar and Sala Andorra, where it was tenths of a second. There's still some yes. big time gaps on that hot seat, yeah. Yes, it is. They look like the last split, a lot of time to gain. As we rejoin the run of Jack Redding from the oh, UK nice. then. 
The track is holding it really good. Yeah, it looks really good. The yeah. rats are still holding up. So he was fast up top, Redding. Then it's 4.3 seconds back at the third split. But Meek showed us that he can pull time back. And I, I think if you, the bottom section of this run seems to be offering up time for those who want to take it. 5.4 seconds back at the fourth split, though. Yeah, you see, it, like, it, after that last double, it's a little bit of a corner. You don't see too much on the camera, but it is a corner there. Yeah, those jumps are interesting. When you see the guys drop in and you can tell they're trying to scrub them, they're fighting for those tents. I think that's a good time. Here we see that on the left-hand side of your screen, the current top 10 in the semi-final as Jack Redding crosses the line in temp, 6.3 seconds back. Palazzari leads away from Chapelais, War, Chatonet, Dooley, Meek, Williamson. So we will be taking 30 riders plus any protected riders outside of lap through to the final. As Ian Guiane, leaves the start hot. He had that great qualifying session in the Gang in Austria in the rain earlier on the season, but six seconds back at the minute. Aaron, tell us about that Andorra race. Can you remember Can you remember a tighter top 30 than that? They've, there was nothing in it the whole day through. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, this is kind of happening in here in the semi. I think there can be, you know, sometimes 20 positions in a couple of seconds. And when you get to this point in the track, you have to remind yourself, it, you know, these tents could be the difference between qualifying and not. You can't give up. you got to fight to the finish because it's, you know, a half a second could be five or ten spots. You also don't know do what anyone else has done. Yeah. yeah that's, that's the hardest point, I think. You have to charge. You, you don't know. It's not like motocross. People are giving you time. You just have to go for it. 7.2 seconds back for Guiane as Baptiste Pierron for of... Dorval. AM Comensal leaves the start. Hot teammate of the fastest qualifier, Benoit Coulange, from yesterday. 2.6 back at the first split. He's in touch. This looks like a good one. Yeah. They're sharing a lot of information in the team, you know, like uh, I know Coulin share a lot and it's amazing to see as well, helping each other out. I think having a good teammate that you can practice with, you can share lines, you can experiment. It's so hard to tell when you ride something what's faster line-wise. If you have a teammate you can follow and you can test things out, I think at least for me it's a huge advantage. I think having having teammates really helps that weekend kind of go smooth. I'm, I'm not casting any aspersions, but is that a completely open conversation throughout the week or will you hold stuff back? Will you see little nibbles here and there that might just be yours and yours alone? I think it depends on the teammates. I think it depends on where you are. I always try to be a, an open book. Um, I've had teammates like Troy Boslin in the past where we're, we're fighting for the same championship together. There is a point where you're like, okay, we're in the title chase. We're still buddies, but, you know, we might save some lines a little bit more, but... I'm going to eat breakfast by myself. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, we never got to that point. I've always kept it nice and friendly, but I don't know if everybody does it that way. 2.2 seconds back for Davide Capello. Another really, really high-class Italian rider. Pretty much in touch, yeah, and you know... Two seconds, you know, in, in the last split sometimes. Make something exceptional and shape sometimes, especially at the last drop, the double in the last corner. A lot of time there to make. Kind of starting to feel like this is going to be the bubble time, right yeah. about here, about three seconds off the current leader. It feels like it doesn't, that yeah. seems to be a constant now we're seeing. That exit speed on that corner is so important. It's important. Yeah. Four seconds back then for Palazzari as Aaron prepares to take another big intake of breath as next up in the gate, Dakota Norton for Intense Factory Racing. Come on, buddy. Dakota was actually third after the second split, had a crash and pulled it oh, back in again. He's 1.7 oh, here, Dakota Norton. You this is a tricky one because, like I said, Dakota's not protected. He's got to actually get down the hill. Just put it out there. Yeah. Really so high, yeah. Hand, hand yeah. the really high. <laughs> Don't get me started on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's working today. He's two seconds, 2.1 oh, seconds faster good. for Norton. Norton looking like he's enjoying the conditions out there in Ludenville, Perigou. Atta boy. Oh, that, that was mint. Yeah, we can get him into finals. He's got, he's had incredible speed the last few weeks. Just hangs about that line slightly, then nails the double. Oh, nicely done right there. The left Dakota Norton cross the line and goes fastest. 1.4 seconds. There you go, Aaron. He must have heard you. Pressure's off. That'll do it. Put it in the finals. That's what we want to see. Now no. he can uh, pressure off. Just go for it. Super high bar on that bike, actually. Oh, yeah. it's so, I'm, not, I don't I'm, not, even... I'm not winding you up, but it is. <laughs> Benjamin's far then on track. Brother to Ollie Zwar. 
These guys are awesome. Pretty interesting story. They both live, I, I believe, oh. in Sweden full time. That's right, yeah. Wow, running in the snow, in the mud. 4.8 on the split number three and 44.3 on the speed track. It's creeping up, isn't it? Yeah, track's getting fast. It's interesting though, as it gets fast and these guys start to charge into the holes, when it's muddy, it becomes a little one line in the corners because you, you don't have the grip to hit the off cambers. So the berms will kind of get good and then the holes will get so deep that they it kind of starts to go backwards a little bit. I'm curious what it's looking like up there. Talk to us about uh, your riders are CSE down now. You can give us a tire choice intel. What are you guys doing? What you can be going back and forth with this week? It's going to be tricky, I think, especially on this track, because it's so flat at the top, you could run a mud spike for the bottom, but you're going to give up so much time at the top that, you know, I think it really makes that selection uh, not so black and white. I would guess that the guys are starting to, to merge towards more drier tires now. Matt Williamson then, seven seconds back at the third split for the young man from the UK, so not heading his way today, but fast through the speed trap, Williamson. Yeah, that's what that's kind of what I was angling at. The top of it is so fast that a, a taller mud spike will just cost you drag on the top. But yeah, yeah but maybe a mix, maybe a mix on the front, something maybe. different than in the rear. Yeah, maybe. or you can you can cut the mud spike yes, so it kind of exactly. ends up a mid spike. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see. I think it's this track is. You can see how the turns all have ruts in them. As long as there's a rut, you can run a dry tire. It's those off cambers that start to get tricky and dry. As we see Williamson take flight, foot off round that left-hander, down to the finish line, 9.18 seconds back on that fastest time set by Dakota Norton. I can't run say, I think the two, uh, three and four split time are really important. Del Levesque for Scott Downhill Factory team leaves the start hub. French rider, we're hearing it's faster, oh. it is fast, 1.1 seconds faster. Oh, he's on the good one, Levesque, 46.1 on the speed trap, that's really quick. He's cooking, <laughs> oh. one second faster at the four split now. Land at the bottom of that double though, <laughs> the first one. Whoa, whoa, like whoa, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> coming in hot air. Whoa. This is a good one. Yeah, really forced the issue around that left-hander as Levesque Heads down towards the line in the Elite Men's semi-finals, crosses the line, goes fastest by 2.1 seconds. Oh, that's nice a good one. run for Lebesque, yeah, good way. Looks like he enjoyed it too, as well he should. Connor Finnis leaves the start hut for South Africa. That would have looked like it was full chat race. That looked good. That could be a, yeah, he might end up good in the overall there for the semis. Yeah, may have just won himself a handful of points. I mean, to enter that top 30. Whew. It's important, the points, too. You don't think about it too much. You think, ah, oh, semi, we just got to get in the final. But there's points on the line for each one of these qualifiers. And you add them all up by the end of the year, it could be 50 or 100 points. It's a lot of spots. Camille Balanche, really, the first half of the season, I mean, she didn't win a race, but she was second, third, second, third. Yeah. She won semis a couple of times, and she built up the points to have that overall points leader's jersey just before that really horrific accident in Andorra. And we do wish her all the best with her recovery. But you're right, Aaron, they add up at the end of the year. Oh, yeah, that, I think Aaron is right. Like Miriam was telling us, you know, you don't give everything maybe on the semi. But uh, I think today, Everything is counting. Like, point could be the difference at the end of the season for the yeah. overall. And you're seeing where the points are lining up in the overall and, and how they're flip flopping and how important these qualifiers and stuff are starting to come into it. We're that time of the year where you can kind of see how things are landing, and it's it's important to get these points if you can. Kaya. Kaya Hearn from Australia. 3.6 seconds down now for the 21 year old for NS Bikes UR. I'm amazed, you know, when we see like the rider sideways like this, the suspension, the work of everything, the work of the body as well, arm, legs, everything is counting today. Like aiming the right direction, not too far ahead, but like enough to see what's coming. His best result was 12th in Mont Saint Anne in 2022. Oh. Just holds on to it there, still makes the double. Yeah. Oh, the best. <laughs> Miss the pedal there, but you see, like the landing of the Red Bull gap start to be. Uh, we can see some markets on the rats there. You can see like some rider losing a little bit of time with the land, uh, like soft spot. Yep. Ollie Davis then, a big, big young talent and a big, big man for Union Forged by Steel City Media. 
had his birthday oh. earlier in the week. So it's like a good one. Yeah, two that break, seconds. That breaking fight. zone there after the, the little river, like, oh, you can see the back well just swinging. Yeah, you can see the bikes are starting to work a little harder. The riders are able to dive it into the holes, and the holes oh. are, are getting bigger. What do you do in a condition like this? You add more click on compression, slower the rebound, or opposite? It's it's tough because I think when it gets muddy, your first inclination is to start to soften things up because you want traction. But on a steep track like this, where you have a lot of big holes, if you go too soft, the bike won't maintain geometry. It's got to you got to almost stiffen it up, which makes the traction worse, but the holdup better. So it's it's a really hard balance. Davis down the line in four, three point seven seconds back for the Australian. Cade Edwards then has been absolutely loving this place for Trek Factory Racing Gravity. Working hard at the top, you see, it's like pumping, pumping. One it of the very, very best bike handlers in the world, I go as far as to say, Cade, on his day. Yeah, this guy's an incredible bike rider. I think he won practice the other day when I was watching. Every time he came by, he was doing something special. Yeah. It's a big unofficial title to have that in yeah. practice, isn't it? Yeah, if you think of the best all-around bike rider, this guy's got to be towards the top of that conversation. If you've never seen his videos online, man, it's, it's crazy for how yeah. well-rounded he is. Definitely check him out. 4.3 seconds back. Just loves riding this bike. That's as complicated as it is, really. When I practiced, I had the chance to, sit, to stay two corner only with him, and I could see the bike sideways. I could see the stickers and stuff. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Edwards in, crosses the line, 4.7 back in favor. Oh! <laughs> and nails the board in on his way through. Never a dull moment. Never a dull that moment. That might get her done, though. That's a, that's a good yeah, one. Yeah, the fifth, that might be enough to get him through in the finals. That kit and bike is pretty cool. Yeah, it looks well, doesn't it? Shoes, everything. Yeah. Antoine Roche. Whoa. Whoa, you see the back swinging Full there. commitment there from Raj, but he's slower through the speed trap now, back at 39.9 kilometers an hour. And you know, sorry. It's so hard to tell, like all these guys look like they're so on the limit. You're like, oh yeah, yeah, and you look at the time, it's, man, it's hard to call, they all ride so good. Yeah, the talent pool, so, so deep at the minute in World Cup downhill. Antoine Raj from France. Oh. Big dab there. You see a lot of people losing the front there because it's a little bit above camber. I'm glad they have that next corner with a bigger app. There we go. Antoine Roger, 9.3 seconds back in 18. Plenty more riders to come, so may just be in trouble with that one, Roger. Yeah, nine seconds is going to be hard. David Trumer then from Austria. He's missed a lot of racing this season with injury, but he is back and going fast here in Ludenville Peyragu. 5.3 seconds back, so Aaron, it feels like we're starting to see the time solidify slightly in the semi-finals. Yeah, I think so. I think right about here is probably the pace where the cutoff is gonna be. Can it's he come always back? hard to tell, but. Yeah. Can he come back to his level? He was a couple years ago, he was amazing. I think so, yeah. I mean, he's a rider that on the right day can be a podium threat. For sure. I think like some of these guys, they've just had a bit of a rough go with injuries. You got to rebuild. The, the competition's so high right now. If you just jump in, you know, in the middle of the season or whatever, it, it takes you a little bit of time to get back. So I'm sure you'll get there. Sometimes yours. Yeah. Confidence, everything. Yeah. You know? Trimmer, six seconds back then. The Austrian national champion. With Andy Kolb in the mix as well. Not necessarily an easy championship to win that these days. Another rider from the Union Forge by Steel City Me Media. Antoine Pierron leaves the start hop. 4.8 seconds back. Already 4.4 at the split number two. Lost a little bit more time on split number three. This looks like another one of those bubble rides. He's going to need to push it to the bottom. I think he's close. Will they know that at the top iron? Will there be somebody giving them information, or is it still just throw, throw it all on the wall and see what sticks? Again, I think it depends on the rider and the team. Um, I never like to know where the times were. I just wanted to focus on myself. Uh, there's still so many riders to go. I would kind of doubt that they're they're watching this right now. Ooh, lost the front a little bit here. Looked like still oh, greasy yeah, in that see, corner. Yeah. Just had to have a couple of bites to cherry in that left-hander on the way down the line. 5.7 back. Oshino Callahan next up for the YT Mob from Ireland. This is another rider if he has a good one. 
He's uh, and he's he's been coming through some injuries and all that same kind of stuff. But when he's on, man, he rides really well. Yeah, he's in Dutch. Yeah, Sprint I, number three, one point five. Irish downhill, big really, gap. really having as big a time as it's ever had. The national scene, absolutely huge. One point five seconds back, so he's made a big chunk of time yes. between two and three. That's a lot there That's at this level. Play. That's a lot of time. He did something special there. Maybe a line or just not touching the brakes. He's still closing in. You see how he looks controlled yeah. too. He's riding really smooth. Oh. <laughs> Feet on. This is a good one. Yeah, I'm, I'm Irish, so I feel I'm confident in saying this. He's no stranger to riding the mud. Yeah, you guys know how to ride the mud. <laughs> oh, Sheena Callan, the drop zone currently at the minute then goes to Felagin, Martin and McDonald. Just a reminder, we'll take the 30, top 30 through from this plus any of the protected riders who are outside of that. So Martin currently on the bubble, the bubble, the first rider we saw today, Dante Silva, no one in the team as the hype man. That's right. Another <laughs> fellow SoCal. Oh, oh, short as in, it. lost the front. Short as in, he went way too confident there. Short as in, lost the front. But uh, has to get back around oh. the pool. He left the track on. Oh, Dante Silva. It was I tell you, when, good. It, when yeah. it starts clicking for him, Aaron, it's going to start clicking. Yeah, there's this whole kind of young group, uh, Chris Grice, Dante. Oh, boy. Ooh, that was a big one. So, oh, it's a bummer to see. Ravelli. Ravelli, right? Loris Ravelli, yeah, big, big slam. Ouch. Yeah, it looked like the I hope he's okay. Yeah, his knee or something. Right. Checking That's that turn right before the bridge. It's literally like a wall. Yeah, it's you just like... slap the bike into it and everything folds and you hope it <laughs> pops you back out. Like and you have whoop section just before it too and it's sharp. Yeah, Ravelli, that looked like a sore one, hoping he is all right. Yeah, Dante Silva, you just get the feeling a couple of more years on the circuit and just that bit more experience and it'll start moving for him. Yeah, for sure. Him and Dooley, Chris, a lot of these kids, they've kind of been coming up together, especially Dooley and Dante and a few of them in, in Southern California. They ride, train, push each other. It's cool to see them keep progressing. Well, Remy Meyer Smith leaves the star hop. Sad to say, we are missing his brother Luke Meyer Smith out with a dislocated shoulder, the second big injury for him this season. But his younger brother Remy is in the semi finals and he's 3.3 seconds off at the second split, which, from what we've seen so far, kind of means he's in touch. Yeah, this looks like he's in there. He's he's right on that edge, I think. You see, he's still using that um, the outside line there. Like it is an upper line, but you need to open the corner. We're going to see maybe different line if the track is drying. I think. Such a talented young racer. Yeah, him and his brother, man, incredible bike riders. I was actually standing right where his brother had the huge crash in practice the other day, and it's. It's such a bummer. These guys put in so much work. You're coming off an injury to have another crash when you feel like you don't even really make a big mistake. You're back on the ground, your shoulder's out. We're sitting there trying to help them get it back together. It's 3.8 seconds back for Remy Meyer Smith. Yeah, Luke described that crash on social media as a silly crash. And I was expecting to see a tip over or something, but it was anything but silly. Oh. It was big. Yeah, it but they're huge. the worst sometimes. They're, they're like. Like heavy, very the shorter. Yeah, very small mistake, huge consequences on that one. It's kind of wrong place, wrong time, but it's kind of the story of this track, really. The speeds are high enough that, and the traction is so limited that any tr any crash here can be pretty big, as we saw with Laura Trevelli as Remy Meyer Smith then makes his way down the finish line. What is he going to stop the clock at? There is a drop zone. So currently, Britt McDonald is the first rider not to make it through. Filaging. Oh, it's Luca Martin drops down into that drop zone. It looked like on the last wood side, after the double double, you can't, it kind of need when you jump in the woods to go more to the right. And uh, Remy was in the inside, and you just can't, like, you have to break and slow down. I think you have to be more round here to carry speed. Yeah, you definitely want to keep it out of the holes. I think sometimes going a little slower coming in, setting your lineup a little wider, and being patient on the entrance really pays out coming out. I think patient, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah, you need to patiently be in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> Take your time, but hurry up. Kind of patiently thing. in a hurry, the Aaron Gwynn story. <laughs> right, 4.9 seconds back for Jacob Dixon from Dremore. County Town, Northern Ireland. As he goes off the Red Bull drop, another MS Mondraker rider just getting back up to speed on the race bike, but really, really enjoying himself at these last few rounds. Dixon crosses the line 5.9 seconds back to go into 10th, so that may work out for him. Johan Garçon for Scott Downhill Factory Racing. 
How many we got? How many we got left here? We got to be getting close, right? We're heading Let's towards the business end of things, certainly. So I guess if you're in a top ten, about you're right in there, about at this point. So. 5.4 for Garcin split number three, losing more and more time. Yeah, 20, 25 riders, 26 riders left by my quick mouse, which I have to admit is not great. So <laughs> those, those top, those riders in the top 10 at the minute. I think that's going to be close. Yeah, yeah 10th close, place yeah. might be the... Because we have got some of the biggest of big guns yet to hit the track. Aaron, let's put you at the top in race kit and you're about to take this track on. You're protected. What's your game plan? If I'm protected, I'm... Well, that was a close. That was close. close. <laughs> <laughs> Almost went out the berm. If I'm protected, I'm going for a win here, I think. I think I'm thinking points. Uh, I want to be aggressive. I want to make the most of every time on the track. Set myself up. I think you, you can't afford to uh, give points away. Jack Piercy then for Comisales or leaves the start hub. He was behind me in practice. I was so scared I could hear him almost on the back of my shoulder. So we can confirm then Jack Piercy has seen the best lines down here following <laughs> Cedric. <laughs> Four up on the split number three. Yep, the three, four second mark in the middle of the track definitely seems to be where it is at the minute. Yeah, we'll see if he can set this. This is the turn we we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's that's a corner he's going to tell us a lot. Yeah, you can see if you come in too tight, it yeah. pushes wide on the exit. And, and you're on the brakes all yeah. the time, and you're cornering in the, and braking. I think you need to set up a high brake and just make the decision. Piercy then, 5.6 seconds back in eighth place for the Commissar Les Or setup. Antoine Vidal, new European champion yet to come, also on that squad. Remy Therion. Ooh, this could be oh, a big one. Gets on the way down the ramp, has a look down, oh, wonder if he's all clipped or... Oh, you don't want that at the start. Mm. Three up. And what if there's a rider who loves a track oh. like this, it's Remy, isn't oh, it? Oh, it was so incredible in Van in all days when it was steep and critical. And as well in Leo Gang, he's incredible when it's difficult and wet, he's so technical. I've stood on the side of the track in Andorra on the old track, the real steep bottom section, watch him come by in the mud, and I'm trying to figure out how to just get down the section. And he's <laughs> five feet off the main line, in the off-camber fluff, just wide open. I'm like, man, I don't I don't want any part of that. Yeah. <laughs> it's the last UCI World Cup win back in 2013, if you can believe it. Remy Terry on then heads down the line, crosses it. 4.6 seconds back in six, so that should be enough for the man they call Mitch to head through into the finals, but this man, Matteo Inige. Oh, in practice, they look spectacular with this stack. We'll see what they can do today. That Comensal IC studio has got some bike riders on oh, that they, they all live in the area where the same dirt than here. They know how to attack this, and oh, they ride Mosine as well all the time. They're kind of the test pilots for a lot of the big gaps and big sends on oh, race yeah. tracks, aren't they? It's always one of those dudes. Not this week, first. though. Tineo no. was the first one to hit that big jump at the top. Yeah, Chris Cummings Ooh. as well. Ooh, different line here. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to get off the main right there. No. Things will uh, get real in a hurry. You see the back wheel just fishing for a like, grip. And the, yeah, 5.7 seconds back for Mateo at the minute. But, the, yeah, I mean, we talk about the depth of talent in international downhill, the depth of talent in French downhill, always so, so deep. 7.3 seconds back, but get ready. This could be a big one. The next man in the gate for the Santa Cruz Syndicate is Jackson Goldstone. Jackson Goldstone, a race winner earlier in the season. In Val de Sole, Trentino, Trentino oh. excuse me, is on course. He's 2.2 back, the Canadian. Ah, big drop, he hit that, you know, that, that almost the stun there. It's crazy. Goldstone is protected. Yes. So this really is a sighter, but as Aaron says, impos important to get a fast one. You can see the mark on the back of his trousers where that rear wheel has buzzed him. All staying in the same line so far, hitting that big burn at the bottom. I think oh, this is a section where he had the crash right here. Yeah, it's off this rock, wasn't it? Looks good today. Yeah. How hard it is, you know, to reset after a crash like this and go flat out on your qualifier run. 
I messaged Steve Pete last night and said, uh, how is he after that crash? He texts back saying, yeah, he's fine. And just as he texts me back, Jackson walked into the hotel and then he fell over a chair. So I was like, <laughs> I was put like, the yeah, boy back on his bike. <laughs> he's come in here, he's looking good. Yeah, this one's going good. I love watching this kid ride. Oh, look at the split time number three. He's so light oh. on the bike, he's so technical. He just stands in the middle of it, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah, he dances a lot on the bike. It's crazy. He tells the bike what he's to do. He's brought back yeah. a yeah. huge a amount huge of time, time in the yeah. second and first split and as well 43.2, I mean, light body, and it's fast. There it is. He, there it is, he's faster, so he's yeah. brought it That's right it. back from being 2.2 down to a tenth of a second faster. He's one of the most technical riders when you watch him. He's really good in that. I mean, he won Val de Sol, maybe yes. the most technical track of the year. He excels in those conditions. So composed. Got the, the yellow plate on Santa Cruz in to get leading away in the team's Ooh. competition. Jackson Goldstone down the line goes fastest by nearly three tenths off a second. Good run from Jackson that. Well, speaking of young men in a hurry, here is Jordan Williams for Specialized Gravity, the first team in the history of the UCI World Cup for all of their riders to have had the overall lead at some stage in the first half of the season. Oh, Six and a half to, back though, yeah, I wonder if there's been an the issue top, somewhere yeah. for Jordan. Well, it looked clean, but lost yeah, a lot of time. Yeah. Maybe you know, Cedric, track. when you when you rode the track, how important it is if you mess up a there's a couple sections on this track where if you mess up one turn, that carrying speed keeps going. It really makes you pay. It it can be a, a small mistake, but a big mistake on the time. Yeah. Are you suggesting that Cedric messed up any of the sections? <laughs> and, I, would, I would never. <laughs> <laughs> and the track was dry. 8.1 back for Jordan Williams. Now the winner of the opening race of the year in Lenzer Heide. Hard to unclip as well and find the pedal again. That's what I find. The drop zone currently then. Roger Vieira, the first rider outside the top 30. Jack Redding is in 30th. Is he going to go down? As he crosses the line. Jordan Williams, who is protected. So Redding lives to fight another day in 30th. Next up. Oh Brace boy. yourselves. Ronan Dunn nearly <laughs> oh, no. toppled out the star cut. <laughs> Put for, your seatbelt on. It's for, loose already. <laughs> for Continental Nukeproof Factory Racing. Some of the clips this guy's been posting this year. Oh, Just oh, mesmerizing. Unreal. 2.2 uh, back, but he was fastest up top, Aaron. Oh, fast. Yeah, 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 good one. Aaron, how do you rate the talent that we see from Ronan Dunn week in, week out? It, it's pretty crazy, man. I mean, he was a guy who was on the podium, I think, last year. Like, when he's on and he... He does certain things on a bike that you just you stand there and look at it in track walk and you go, no way is somebody going to try to jump that. And then here he comes, <laughs> watching it. <laughs> Sender, yeah. It's amazing. Just an absolute fairy tale story. Ronan Dunn so far heads to the line. 4.4 seconds back, so done in the seventh. That should be enough, do we reckon? Yeah, I think that'll get it done. He's pretty good in the overall, too. Lost some time. Next up, Greg Minar. Up for the Santa Cruz Syndicate with that yellow plate. The team lead the way in the team's championship. Second last time out in Palar and Sal Andorra. He was fastest up top, but he's dropped 2.8 seconds somewhere, Cedric. Yeah, uh, definitely at the top. Maynard, heavy, you know, perfect timing, like really strong physically. But he lost a lot of time where we expect Greg Minard to shine, you know? Whenever Greg you, Minard is a goat. Whenever you think of those tracks that we've seen throughout, Recent signs, 4.4 seconds back for Greg now, where there has been multiple line choices. I'm thinking of the UCI World Championships in Leger, tracks like that. He can just have something in his pocket that works better than anybody else is riding. He's always impressive. He always has some line just like sinking outside the box. That's what that's Greg Minard is well, brilliant now. Minard not protected today. Heads down to the line, six seconds back into 12. So we'll have to see. That yeah, should work for Minard, but it could be tight. Next up, though. Danny Hart, whenever we talk about wet weller runs <laughs> and some of the most incredible displays of bike handling this sport has ever seen, this man's name is usually quite close in contention and he's three tenths back. That's good. That's good because he's attacking the track where he have to attack and where he's the best at. We all know when it's difficult, Danny Hart is incredible. Another non-protected rider as well. Yeah, it's crazy. It just shows you how difficult it is. You have these guys that are can be race winners and they're not protected in the finals because of just things they've had to go through this year. And it's, it's such an up and down thing. It makes it exciting for the fans. I know for the racers, it's a bit stressful. <laughs> 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 the 
is a good one. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's, a, that's a good competitor. Ride. Danny Hart, third place in a second back. That's this kind of perfect iron at this point in the competition. Yeah, that'll do. Puts him in a good spot. He can see the guys in front of him, knows how much time he needs to make up. Antoine Vidal, the reigning European champion. Building confidence huh? after podium, uh, European championship. Yeah, he was fastest as well. Now he's dropped to a second and a half back, scrubs off there beautifully. You know, he's the kind of guy you need to take the bike off. If not, he will ride all day. Yeah. He yeah, think he's, he's a... strong, 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 but he needs... Whoa! Whoa! There we go. Vital. Oh! Dude, how did he do that? <laughs> <laughs> how is he still off. standing and how is the tree still standing? Antoine Vidal takes the pad off the tree. Oh, and he was so on. good too. He was 1.5 on speed number three. I hope the um, brake lever didn't move and when you hit so, the tree like this. Looks okay from here. Antoine Vidal, we spoke to him earlier in the weekend, absolutely buzzing off that first podium last time out in Andorra. Well. Futal there, he's a motocross style, yeah, second not, rider. Not doing protected, that. so six seconds back in 13th with an impact to a tree. Would you, set us, let's talk about Re this replay. Well, he lost the front at the bottom one I saw this morning. It's always greasy then, went straight to the tree, but he saved it so good. He just, he didn't bail. He just <laughs> like went for it. He was like, hey. This guy though, GT Continental factory racing, Ethan Crick from the UK, sixth last time out in Andorra, having a big year, 2.8 seconds back, so he is in touch, gets past Van Antoine's tree. He's another rider <laughs> coming off an injury, I believe. He missed a race or two Yeah, earlier. he's had a couple of niggles, I think, just awkward stuff that's taken a long time to heal, and then I think he had a DSQ for going around a pole earlier in the season as well, maybe Val de Sol, or sorry, maybe uh, Lea Gang, excuse me, before that, so. It's been tough for Ethan this year, but he proved last time out that when he gets it all on the line, one of the fastest. Yeah, good to see him back on track. Yeah, injury, like we talk, it's so hard to come back right away. You want to, but it so takes some time. The drop zone then, Finnis, currently in that 30th position. Garçant's first one down currently, so we're looking to take 30 through to the final here. Max Hartenstern. Up. I've been riding with him, and it was so hard to follow him more than two corners. <laughs> I think it looks good. It looks good, oh, yeah. Yes. It's 800 from a second in Gr the green. Green smells good, especially <laughs> at this part. I'm not, even, I'm not even going to follow up with a question as to how you can smell the <laughs> colour. But, oh, he's eight tenths back now, so it's just got away from Hartenstern somewhere. But yes. for a semi-final run, maybe exactly what he needs. 44.4. That's fast in the speed trap. Aaron, track's looking really good now, isn't it? It is, yeah. I think it's getting better and better. It'll be interesting once we get into finals, we can see some more of the track here on the camera angles, too, how things are shaping up. That's a good run. So Hart and Cern, good run. 1.7 seconds off the hot seat time off Goldstone as Lucas moves into the hot seat now. Lost a lot of time like Aaron Green. Uh, this last wood section is really important. Yeah. Troy, Bros Troy Brosnan then for the Canyon Collective. On course, was fast up top, so there's definitely time up oh, top. Nice oh, one there. Just pulls across that little gap, lovely. Yeah, it was to line, you know, to land behind the rock, but I think everyone goes safe now and jump in the berm. Aaron, we talk every week, he's just great to watch on a bike, isn't he? He's so solid, man. I mean, it's like every track, all the time. His technique, his style, the way he charges, especially, uh, it sounds funny, but I, I really enjoy watching him pedal. <laughs> he's got such a cool, aggressive, like, all-out sprint style when I watch him pedal. It just looks like he's ripping the cranks off the bike. Yeah, Brosnan. And talented on every track. He's there all the time. Doesn't matter where it is in the world, what kind of track it is. It is, always yeah. Here. I'm a little surprised to see the time right now. I don't know if he's struggling a little bit with something. Yeah, just a bit frustrated at the minute. I think Brosnan, as he crosses the line, 8.7 back, 29th place. Not what he no, will he be had looking a crash, for. I think. He is protected, oh, though. You can see him looking at the. I don't know. Is he dirty? Oh, he, on the right, he's, he was touching his yeah. right side. Might have had an issue here. Shack Next up, Bernard Kerr leaves the start hub for Pivot, Pivot Factory Racing. Excuse me. Another man on the podium in Andorra, last time out. What can he do? I talked to him just about an hour ago, and he was excited. He said the track was really good. It was coming along. Had a big smile on his face. 2.3 seconds back now. 2.7 at the four split. Yeah, he's losing time. 2.7 on the split number four. 4.4. Uh, 44 kilometers an hour. 
Yeah, Williamson now in the drop zone in 30th place. So Bernard Kerr crosses the line. Seventh puts Greg Williamson out of the finals then. Is it going to be enough? Matt Walker, teammate of Williamson, leaves the star out for Madison Saracen factory team. This is a guy that's due for a big one, man. We were talking earlier. I mean, he won a World Cup overall a couple years ago. He rides these conditions incredibly. 1.8. 1.8 back. Yeah, it would be. It, we're just waiting for his comeback, really. Yeah. It's interesting to see that third split. It seems like a lot of guys are fast at the top and losing time there in split three. Maybe the track change, different line, or maybe just, you know, start to blowing out some of the corner, I guess. 3.2 wow. back now for Walker. So. Matt Walker, national champion of the UK, not protected, potentially in trouble here in Ludenville, Perigu. That could be a little bit of what you're seeing. If you know you're not protected and you know you're on a good run, you feel like you're going to be in, you kind of play it safe at the bottom, just get it across the line. Walker, 10th then, 4.2 seconds back. Thomas Estac then, one of the absolute talents in terms of just being able to throw a bike down a hill. So much skills on this kid. He does that little gap across there. Estac, oh, four really tenths back, four tenths to the good at the second split, then 3.4 back at the third. Nice. Lost some times on the speed number three, but... We made the comparison uh, at a race earlier in the season, Cedric. He was kind of Ronan and done oh. before Ronan and done was Ronan and done, wasn't he? <laughs> he was, <laughs> exactly. He was that wild man that people had phone clips off and just doing gnarly yeah. stuff. Well, oh, you see it on social media, it's just insane. But lost a lot of time. We saw a mistake there where Antoine hit the tree. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he's pushing hard. He's pushing hard. He knows he made some tra he made some mistake there. He's on the bubble. Yeah. Yeah, not uh, protected. Not protected on that common cell IC studio team. Oh. A stack 23rd then, so he's in for the time being. 6.3 seconds back. I wouldn't say safe 100%. Here we go. Charlie Hatton, King Charles leaves the start hut. What can he do today for Continental Afferton? I was standing at the finish earlier, and uh, he came through those last few jumps in the mud just about perfect. It looked good. I, I'd imagine he likes these conditions. Just won the world championships in conditions similar to this. You see how worse. hard they crank. You see how hard they crank to jump that double. It used to cr we used to cruise there to jump that, and now you need to pedal. It means like the ground is soft still yeah. at the top. So he's yeah. fastest up top so far. Four tenths of a second. He won that UCI World Championship Rainbow Stripes jersey in the mud in Fort William. So. Conditions here should play that's, to his strengths. That's where a lot of people lost sometimes. That's a section right there, I think. You yeah. can see he kind of stood tall on the bike there for a second, took a big deep breath. There it is. Big send here. Yeah. There it is. One and a half seconds faster now for Charlie Hatton. He didn't went up here. They're using the track way compact to, I guess, keep the speed. Grass is dangerous today. He's <laughs> so smooth, isn't he? Just And so much of it comes from that physical strength, Aaron. 44.9. Really, really strong. Yeah, very strong rider. You can see, too, these guys, they're, they're deceptively fast. I mean, he looks so smooth. He doesn't look out of control. He's just carrying that speed, linking his corners together. His That's, exits look good. Yeah, exit speed looks yeah. amazing. That's what that UCI World Championship run was like. It wasn't like what we'd seen from Danny Hart in the past when he won his stripes, you know, just on the ragged edge. It was so controlled, but so fast. Yeah, he's not leaving any time. You see, there's not the mistakes where you're sliding out, you're wrecking the momentum. It's just solid all the way down. Really steady. Got nice and high there. It was yeah. good. He's also had a World Cup run to get used to the stripes, to get used to the extra pressure and sort of get back into his routine after all the extra media that that uh, and the responsibilities that they bring with them. So Charlie Hatton on a good run here. Eight tenths back at the third split. Lost some time on speed number three, but pretty much in touch. The track built by oh, Roman Bike control. and so his good. team. Look like he's squeezing the bike with the knee to control a little bit of the turbulence. Yeah, he told me they've got they've experimented a lot with um, some extra weights on the bottom bracket for I guess tracks like this is where it really helps with weight low down on the bike. It's all between your ankles. Yeah, it kind of helps the bike stick to the ground. Kind of makes it not feel like it's skipping around as much, especially when you're fighting for traction. 
50 k an hour yeah. on the last drop after the double. Yeah, he, he described it to me as, you know, a bit like descending on an e-bike. You've got all that weight really low down. It actually feels great. So Charlie Hatton heads through this tricky last little left-hand corner, gets a few pedal strokes in. Sixth place, 2.4 yeah, seconds back. Good quality run. You boys impressed with that? Yeah, it's a good run. Yeah, I think that's a good one. You can yeah. kind of see where you're at. You know where you need to, you know, pick it up a little bit for finals, hanging out at the bottom a little more. Well, nine to go. Laurie Greenland for Santa Cruz Syndicate leaves the star hut. What a start. You see that manual pedaling? You know oh. we've, we've been waiting to see the best of Greenland yet this season. And this sort of track in these conditions may just provide it. 1.6. And and just as I said, 1.6. I tell you, when you're good, you're good. <laughs> Call it. Yeah, Boy. he's been due for one. Oh, you know, he always has there. that ride where he comes out of the gate so aggressive, and it's like, oh man, here we go. 42.7. Oh, he's kilometers moving an hour there. The speed trap, yep. Greenland from Bristol in the UK. Oh, way high here. Still only 25 years old. He's been on the circuit for so long that you could be forgiven for thinking he's older. Yeah, him and Goldstone. They're very similar, actually, in style. Yes. Very similar figures on the bike. Moving along 2. the bike. 2.8 oh, seconds he did back. Great. You could see on the shoot there, it was not touching the brake, oh, not much. Aaron, we wouldn't have thought that that time was a no splits earlier on. Yeah, I mean, I've been waiting for it. There's always, you know, you get into that top 10, wow. there's always somebody that's going to break out and do something special, and you're like, all right, here's the guys that are separating themselves for the win here. And Oh, looks like Laurie's yeah. kind of the first guy that's that's really starting to try to We've do that. We've seen it so often this season. There seems to be the, that one rider with 10 or 12 to go who just ignites it. And there we are. Three seconds now faster for Greenland. 50, 50 k an hour entering that drop. Whoa! Off. Doesn't lose too much speed off there. Oh, find the clip pretty quick on that one. <laughs> yeah, I got it back just in time. Yeah, just in time for the corner. Greenland over the double. Round the left. Gets the panels in over the line. Laurie Greenland crosses the line. 2.4 seconds. You can't see it. Cedric's giving it the, the chef's kiss in the booth. No, because I translate exactly what Aaron Green, I mean, the Eagle of America, he saw exactly <laughs> where I think the time has to be made. And this is, that's why you have Aaron Green there. Oh, spot on. Yeah, I like, love there. to see that. When you see a rider building down the track, too, it's getting better and better and better. Man, this is a guy that really surprised me. What a me. story this is. Is Dylan Maples with an absolutely boss qualifier. What do you qualify seventh? Something like that yeah. out of nowhere. Pretty high uh, rise up and the bar too. Yeah. Different yeah. setup on some riders. He was eight. He was eight from quality. Yeah. Big and the ball too. Awesome, right? He's riding good here too. I mean, yeah. he's in touch with those top few guys. We saw Jackson on the inside on our line. He was sticking the outside Maples. Second year elite Dylan Maples. His splits yesterday, I was looking at him this morning too. He was a little slower up top, but man, he really poured it on in the steep stuff here at the bottom. That it's That's right now. It looks like yeah. Oh, yeah, he's going for it. That's the sections. So, so hard to change direction when it's off camber. You need to trust your tire and your capability, really. Five seconds back, though, for Maple, so he may well land himself on the bubble here. It's currently Laurie whoa, Greenland. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> In the hot seat. How uh, I'll I'll important it is when it's steep to put that. I, I saw some guys um, rising up a little bit, the brakes, too. To don't because when it's steep, you have to go and reach to find yeah, the, you the reach brakes. For him. I usually don't move my brakes, but I will a lot of times slide my uh, forks down in the crowns a little bit just to bring that front end height up a little bit. That was usually the only change I like to make. I don't like changing. And does too that much. just change your position slightly on the yeah, brake? It keeps the front end a little higher, so when you get into oh man, Whoa. way inside the <laughs> way inside the <laughs> oh, it made it good too. He's pulling it off. <laughs> Maples on a run. Crosses the line, 14th, so seven seconds back, might do it. Yeah, might do it. As we say, Baptiste Pierron drops down, Indlet, the first rider not to make it through. We are in to we the top the, seven now. Can you do it, Vergier? Yeah, here we go, Laurie's Vergier. Running the stash. Another rider that we've talked a lot about just you feel that he just needs that big result this season. He's 1.2 back at the second split. Was fastest up top. You see his body language there, fighting like that's the bike. High. Yeah, he held that high line all the way through there. It was yes. Nice. Oh, the ball. Oh, lost the rear a little bit here, but no problem. Saved it. 
spoke to him earlier in the weekend, and he's he was quite muted about his chances this weekend. I think I think the uh, the UCI Mountain Bike Festival Haute Savoie Leger it might suit him a bit more, but if there's a bike race in France, he's going to go out and try and win it. Yeah, he's a man. He's a tough one for me to figure out when I watch him ride. When he's on, he rides so good, and he looks like he's not even trying. He's so technical, like he's he's perfect when he has his runs, and then. Sometimes you watch another run and he looks the same and he'll be a little bit behind. It's yeah. like, but man, when he's on, he's a guy. Right now he's fighting though. Yeah. I think Four. last year and this year too. I mean, there was he was so close to a lot more wins than he had. He yeah. had little issues that held him back, but I think a couple things going a little different. We've seen in the past Troy Brosnan have a similar problem. He was always right in amongst the wins, but hasn't converted as many as you, yeah. he was probably due. Yeah, you can see he's fighting on the last part of the section. He's looking for grip, not so easy. Vergier came past us in practice at the, that big off camber before the road and just playing with the front end, letting it slide, gathering it up. Yeah, you can see it right there. I mean, he knows exactly where the grip's at. He's just kind of sliding it in there. He's got really good feel. Lars Vergier then for Trek Factory Racing. Down the line, goes into 10th place. He is protected, Vergier, so a good sighter. Next up. Former teammate of Loris Vergier, Lucas Shaw, for the Canyon Collective Factory team, a rider with the US national champs sleeve on. I'd expect a good top split out of him, too. Lucas so strong in the flats. There you are right, go. Half a second. You're right. This is another guy I love to watch ride. I mean, fortunate to, to now live pretty close to him, get to race with him. One of the nicest dudes you'll ever meet. New US national champ. Sleeve looks good on him. Aaron, you yourself, eight times a U.S. national champ. What sort of confidence does that give you in the big flyaway races over to Europe? I think it's great. I mean, every time you put the jersey on, you can represent the country in that way. That was a good save. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's cool, man. I know for him, too, he's raced a lot of them. He's been close a lot of times. He's been close to me a lot of times on them. Um, it was really cool to be at the finish with him this year when he won it. I could see it in his face. It's just... Uh, you know, to win your own national champs is always one of those goals as a rider. It feels really good. Three seconds back. Yeah, there. lost one. a lot of time. He was fighting a lot more. Oh, Ooh. nice one, yeah. Lee. Woohoo! That's First hard guy. to do today. <laughs> That's hard to do today when it's greasy. Just pulled and went right to the other side of the track. At the top, he looked almost too easy at the top. He, the, his bike control was insane, yeah. but you could see he was fighting a little bit more where he lost a I lot of time. I always find him a very, a very, very difficult rider to work out how hard he's pushing because he has that very relaxed, controlled style. He's so technical. Like, he's so smooth. He really, you know, he, he doesn't rush things. 4.3 seconds back for Lucas Shaw. Lost it's up. interesting, those S-turns up there a little further, I, I kind of feel like the holes and the, the track starting to go the other way in those couple of spots, they're, they're getting rough, harder to carry speed out of the turns. That last turn's looking better. Yeah, you have to stay inside that big, uh, deep pocket there. It's a good ride for the boy. Yep. Seven so far. Seven so far then. Here we well, go. Oh, the leader. Point Finn leader. Isles leaves the star hot for specialized gravity. Whip with that newly acquired He's UCI overall going for points, points leader's jersey. He's probably going for points on semi-final. Two tenths of a second faster at the top, just sits down, catches a breath. I like to hear his interview earlier too, saying I just want to focus on one run, one race at a time, not think about the overall. Go for points, go for wins. I mean, easy to say, hard to do, Whoa. but that's absolutely, I think, the mindset he needs to be in. Nicely done there. that jump, but carries a tremendous amount of speed, 148 beats per minute. Oh, yeah, it, was a real, it feels like there's been a real mood change for Isles. He looks so often this season quite frustrated, but that interview, for everybody was talking about having that overall leader's jersey, there seems to be a change in mentality, a change about him that he's he's comf confident now. Yeah, I mean, he's earned it. He was, what was he, third overall last year. He won his first World Cup. He's just becoming a top guy every week and now. This has been a few years in the making. He's getting it done now. It's, uh, yeah, I think absolutely he's a title contender. He's I like good. what he's doing. Wow. Try to stay low, not too much air time. That was fast. Yeah. Yeah, protected rider as well, of course. Oh, different line there. Overall leader's bib on. Yeah, Gets wow. across. That's uh, nice. That was yeah. really nice. He's definitely not in the uh, the high handlebar club that concerns you. <laughs> he's so low. He can reach his toes. Grips just above the front axle of that bike. 
Yeah, it's crazy how much weight and commitment he puts on the front wheel when he leans in. I mean, you can see it, his head, his, his whole body, everything's fully oh. committed on that front wheel. A little bit similar with Loic. Yeah, Loic rides a little more centered. He's a little lighter on the bike, but very similar. Both elbows out, low on the bike, a lot of weight on the front. It was quite an early 2000s thing, the ultra low front end, um, flat bars on these bikes and stuff, and it's worked its way back up now. It's 161 beats per minute. Oh, that's... Yeah, that's my max. But 2.6 seconds yeah, lost, slower. Yeah, that's some damage. It looked good there. I don't know if I the track, see. like say, Aaron say, maybe the track been worked a little bit there. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, he's got that low setup too. This will be the first time that he's been able to oh. come through this bottom section fast with these conditions and the big holes. Uh, a lot of times you go back to the pits after this and go, okay, I know where we're at. It's time to uh, stiffen the fork up, you know, make some changes. It's really a good opportunity for him because he is protected to, to really be able to go for it, feel things out, make an adjustment, and kind of be ready for finals. 165 beats per minute for Finn Isles. Aaron, is there much opportunity? We heard 3.5 seconds yeah, back for now. Then. Let's just get Finn Isles down towards the finish line in this elite men's semi-finals here. At the UCI Mountain Bike World Cup, Luden VL Peyragu, the overall points leader, goes into seventh. Laurie Greenland still leads the way with that time Not of really 3.35. So four to go. And next up, a man who took his debut victory after nearly a decade of trying in Liagang earlier in the year, Andreas Cole. What can Andy Cole do today? So strong. Yeah, this guy, man, he charges. He's going so to charge the top. Yeah, he's going to charge the top for sure wow. because he can take it. Like it's physical. Two seconds. Fast up top. This is a guy that normally does not lose speed towards the bottom, too. Even Andorra last year, whenever the track's smooth, I think looking at, or Steep, looking at his splits yesterday, too, he was he was fast at the bottom. He knows how to ride the Steep stuff. 1.2 and split. Number one. I think it's it's been a long time since we saw scenes like his victory in Liagang in Austria. And it's good to see him back, too. He had that injury. Well, I wouldn't say it was really, it, thankfully it wasn't a big injury, but he had that big crash last week in Andorra. I went over to the truck and chatted with him a little bit after the race. He was, uh, I think he was in for a few stitches in his arm that are probably still there. Oh. And uh, his ankle was a little banged up, but he was walking around. And he looked like he was going to be okay. A tenth, good to see him. a tenth of a second. Well, the effort and name across the team truck and on the bike itself. You have to say, Andreas Kolb, there, are, there is shades of G effort in the bike. Oh, yeah. Just that extreme, like that physicality, the size, the muscle mass, and that ability to just eat up injuries and keep going. They do. They have a similar riding style, too, a little bit when you watch them ride. Very aggressive. Super nice guy, too. Always like chatting with him. He seems to always be in a pretty good spirit, no matter kind of what's happening. Really pulls off a mustache as well. Yeah, <laughs> he's got a heck of a mustache. Heck of a mustache. <laughs> Got to give credit where it's due. Yeah, that race in Liagang, Austria, earlier in the year, where Valley Ho and Andy Kolb took wins. Great for the sport there. So he's lost 1.1, but still green. What we always say, Cedric, doesn't matter the number. <laughs> when it's, it's good, green. it's good. <laughs> it's interesting to see the styles, too. I mean, Kolb's such a big, kind of powerful rider. And then you got Laurie and Jackson, I think, one, two right now. Very similar, smaller riders, Ooh. real light on the bike. Whoa! Oh, Andy Kolb goes down in the semi final here in Ludenvale, Peyragu. That corner catching a few people Yes, out. exactly. But that was, the, that was the entrance of the corner this time, not the exit. So Kolb is protected, so he does have an element that he can play with a bit here, but you still want to get a good sighter in, and that crash, he didn't lose too much time in it, but does that play in your mind now? Does that sort of enter things for the next run? Yeah, I mean, it's a bummer for points. I think it depends on how he's feeling up to that point. You know, sometimes it feels good to know, hey, if I can just clean that, that one spot up, I'm doing well. That corner's tricky up there, too. I was walking the track. There's a lot of roots and rocks. It's completely off camber coming into it. You can't tell on the camera. Uh, but getting the setup for that is really hard. Well, Andreas Kolb over the line with three to go. Joined Still in the booth, happy. of course, by Aaron Gwynn and Cedric Gracia. 0.5 was a crash. Yeah, I think that. that's a I think good that. run. But this man who won last time out in Pal Aronsal, Thibaut de Prella, leaves the start hut now. Is it the click he needed? Whoa. Oh, yeah. Man, oh, that trip. Ah. Well, we knew we was going to see something special from this guy today. <laughs>
Oh, pre-jumping. Oh, pre I, I saw jo uh, Jordan Williams doing, doing that too, in practice. I always say Tebow is the funnest guy to watch leave a Stargate. I stand by it. Yeah. <laughs> he comes out so What hard. did you make of that handshake in Valley <laughs> Solo? I don't Tino. know, man. I don't, <laughs> he, where he gets the intensity all the time. It's crazy. All in, the but energy. that's the way he performs. Well, paddles. he's all in green here. 1.5 seconds to the good. This is a guy that's won some of the muddiest races the last few years we've seen, too. He knows how to ride the mud. I think it's so interesting as well. He's missed Miriam Nicole, who we had earlier in the show, and he's missing Armory Piron from that team. But sometimes, Aaron, for a young rider, that can actually, he said, I've been loving it. He said, there's more pressure, but I ride better under pressure. Yeah, and he seems like a guy that does pretty good with a little bit of confidence. Like, he gets that win. I know the results earlier in the year maybe weren't as good, but I was looking oh, at the results. He's, he's gotten better every race. He's building. He's headed the right direction at the right time of the season. And I think he's he's got a lot of momentum going oh, right nice now. Nice double there. Yeah, that's good. What yeah. is complicated is jumping. Yeah. You don't want to have nothing to do with the roots. He was my pick in the predictor today, and I'll tell you why. He's 21 years of age, and he told me that he didn't really party after that win in Andorra because he was so focused. That's what I like to see. He's charging, and that's the way he performed. When he when he tried to go slower than that, mistakes. But when he charged like that, it's he's incredible. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, big one, the bubble. So Deprella is protected. That's the tricky one with him. He goes for it so hard, he makes time, but it, he'll have that mistake. I vow to soul, same thing, you know, make the one mistake that kind of leaves the time on the ground, but I don't I don't know that you try to fix it because if he just backs everything down, I don't know that he, he does what he does. You know, that's kind of the spot he's in right now. It's just a, just a hint of a bit of needle between him and Lloyd Bruni on social media this week as well, which I don't know. I got the impression from talking to him. Might have just put a bit of fire in the belly. Yeah, it's a tricky one. I mean, I kind of get it from Loic's perspective. It's hard. I think Loic was definitely on pace for a win last week. Uh, I know from his from his view, you know, it kind of got taken from him with the weather, but Tebow made it happen. You know, he threw the run down. He walked away the winner of the bike race. That's and, and he's happy, you know. I mean, he's going for it. And Tebow likes to celebrate. I mean, he comes through the finish line, bike on the ground, arms in the air, screaming. <laughs> it's hard to watch that when you've, you know, when you haven't won. So it's, uh, I love to see it, though. <laughs> it's fantastic for the sport. Great to see. Tebow DiPrella turns the bike midair, heads over the finish line, second place with that big yeah. foot off excursion there as well. Go. Yeah, there you go. He knows How it. much did he lose there? How much? There uh, we go. Cedric, talk us through what happened. Well, he went offline and tried to survive because there's nothing to catch there. And he see the fence coming, but he's just he's not giving up. He know he have to roll. If he stop the bike, he will lose the grip. But Well, we mentioned him a second ago. Here is Loic Bruni on course now in the semi-finals of the elite men's race here at the UCI Mountain Bike World Cup, Ludenville. Peyragu, two to go. Bruni, the second of them. That's second to last, shot. sorry. 2.3 seconds faster <laughs> at the top yeah. for Bruni. Bruni, man, he's really... The top parts of the track, when they start flat, and you got to be precise and carry that momentum, you uh, see the he's way, incredible, man. You see the way he's pushing after that corner with yeah. his feet? Yeah. Just to put the bike back to speed instead of cranking. Bruni. Absolutely superb. Up top here, Ludenville Peyragu did ride the test event here earlier in the year, but the track is so ridden in since then, it's barely comparable. He's lost 1.3 seconds, but he's still a second faster on that prototype specialized. I was impressed about the bike work under his, you know, his body. Body Look at is it. solid and just the bike is working. Just in. bending his way around that apex mm. marker there. Yeah, the way he works with the bike, the way those guys set their bikes up, it's uh, it's very interesting. I mean, a lot of feel through the ground. You can see it how he rides. It's completely kind of the opposite of what we just saw at a Tebow, who's just aggression and strength and charge. And Bruni's just, I mean, he's so precise, so smooth, carries the speed, works with the bike really well. It doesn't look like there's a single kind of thing out of step. Yep, chat to Olin Suspension, who, you know, there's been so much talk about what's actually going on underneath that coiling and underneath the the, uh, the prototype stuff they've got on that bike. And they said that, you know, they could make this so, the system so much more automated like a motorsport, but ultimately the rider always says that they want control of how the bike feels. 45.2, that's fast. <laughs> yeah, like Bruni, you just still on the hunt for his first win of the season. He's lost a bit of time there, three tenths back, obviously protected, so Bruni. Yeah, you see, I mean, Laurie really did something special in that third split. You he can really see did. Tebow was on pace minus the, uh, the yeah. mishap. I mean, you just gotta be aggressive in there, I think. Aaron, I mean, he missed out 
obviously with the Weller and Palar and Salah and Dora, but that was a superb run in very difficult conditions. It was, for sure. I think that was a championship ride. I mean, he, he really had a, a horrible track. I think he still put it into, what was it, 20-something? Top 20, yeah, top 20. Got some points. Um, I know as bummed as he was. I mean, those are the days, those are the rides you need if you're going to be there at the end of the season. Oh, the suspension well, work is amazing. Aaron Gwynn, five times the UCI World Cup champion, thinks that that was a ride of a champion. What is Lloyd Bruni going to do here in the semi-finals? At home in France, third place. And just looked pretty chilled across the line, didn't he? Yeah, solid. I look, mean, at the, look at the gaps. 1.3, Deprella, Bruni together, Goldstone. Levesque as we head back to the top, and this is another one. Who knows what is about to happen? Benoit Coulange, Benny the Jet, leaves the start hop. Fastest qualifier on course here in Ludenville, Peyragu. Oh, so impressive in practice. Yeah, I know it's only semis, but you got to feel like this guy's due for a win. 1.6 oh, wow. faster 1 on the top. Yeah, it's, it's quick. Coulange, as Aaron says, very much due a win. He's done everything but, really. One of the most softly spoken, nice guys on the circuit. No and one is sticking to outside now, eh? everyone in. Posted a photo of himself on social media earlier in the week in a lumberjack's outfit, if you saw that, for all the trees that he's <laughs> felled over the years in his career. Yeah, he found one at a high rate of speed again <laughs> last <laughs> week, too. Yes, he this was, he was doing, looking good, too, last week. Yeah, this is a guy, I think he spends a lot of time in Morzine, around that area, riding. Um, the trails around there that they practice on are very similar to the bottom part of this track, really steep. A lot of times they're super muddy, off camber. He's a guy that knows how to get it done down there. What was One. it? They, they call it politely traction limited. Yeah. <laughs> 1.7 on speed number two. Yeah, Cologne building his way into this one. He's final attempt for the second. Really aggressive through that tight 180 degree right hander. But it's now are. it's important. Like I run, say, split number three. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, I saw the back wheel sliding a little bit there. This has been the, uh, the decision making split a little bit. We'll see where he's at. Outside line, Bruni was inside there. Kalanj rides the back axle so well. Weight further off the back of the bike, just forcing that back wheel to create grip. Look how steep it is. That's where Daprila had the mistake. Tebow charging. Yeah, looking good to me, but just on clips there. Yeah, on clip there. Few little mistakes in that split. Be interesting to see where we're at. Listen to the crowd up in those woods. It's friends. He's Whoa, still fast. Is fast. Nice. And I tell you what, this looks like a different Benoit Coulange. It doesn't look as ragged. Yeah, he looks like he's finding that balance. Keep forgetting we're only in the semis Whoa, right now. Big send <laughs> over. Just as I say big. that. <laughs> Coulange not protected, but uh. sending it both axles sideways into that corner. I'm so scared about that tree now after Vidal. I yeah, think all the tree's the more. scared of Vidal. Yeah, yeah, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> he's hoping for. Coulange, a, a tenth of a second back now, so a good sighter. Can he go faster, though? Ah, that look was at, clean. Look how far down the heels are. <laughs> yeah. Nearly touching his toes, nearly <laughs> touching his shins. Well, as Aaron Gwynn departs us, Benoit Coulange rounds the left-hander, crosses the line in first. Six hundredth of a second faster. Jacob Dixon is the first man not to make it through in that drop zone, but Benoit Coulange could today whisper it be his day. He needed that run, Cedric. Cedric yes. is wide-eyed and open mouth beside yeah, me. Yeah, so control and everyone had trouble. He was in control when we used to see him a little bit in danger, and when you say so, he just launched that big gap into the little river thing. Just incredible, look at the skills. I, I like the way he's working his arm, taking the food out here to make sure he don't, do, he don't use too much the rear brake. You go Benoit Coulon's in, fastest in the semi-final, just as he was in qualifying. Laurie Greenland mesmerizing behind him in second, then Deprella, then Bruni, Goldstone, Levesque, Hart, O'Callaghan, Hart and Stern, and Isles. What a semi-final we were treated to there. Shaw, Hatton, Norton, Kerr. Vergier called Palazzari, Davis, great result for him, Walker in 19th through. Then we've got Rhoda Dunn, Dylan Maples backs up that qualifier in 21st, Tyrion, Edwards, Crick, Ahern, Piercy, Vidal, Minar in 28th, squeaks through. Whew. Pierron, Chapelet, then Dixon, Meyer Smith, Estac, Trimmer, Soir, Chatonet, and Inige, those outside the top 30. So Troy Brosnan is protected, he'll make it through as well, just ahead of Greg Williamson. 
Dean Lucas finish. Garcon. Jordan Williams also protected 51st with work to be done behind Jack Redding and ahead of Roger Vieira. Williamson, Martin, McDonald, Silva, Bandera, Suarez, Alonso, Ravelli. Well, an absolutely enthralling semi-final here from Ludenviel Peragu. Do not forget to join us for the elite final. Set up beautifully, track riding, absolutely superb conditions. Optimal. Thank you very much to Miriam Nicole, Aaron Gwynn, and of course yourself, Cedric Gracia. <laughs> get, you get, your breath, get your breath back after that one. Well, it was, it was already really fast. Everyone is on the A game today. We're going to see something spectacular this I afternoon. I get the feeling that this might be one of those races that we talk about for such a long time afterwards. Book your seat on the sofa. Do not go anywhere. We will be back any second now.